Welcome everyone to another day at the agency. Today we're going to have a special review for the end of season wrap up of Spring Anime 2003. And I'm getting my own voice through you, Yuki. Welcome to Yuki Kazi Gaming Snappy. Oh, we've got a little bit of echo. <laughs> I may have fixed it on my side. I may have fixed it on my side. Yeah. Nope, didn't fix it. <laughs> Let's make sure my nope, my monitor's off. Let's make sure my nope, my monitor's off. Yep, starting scuff. Gotta love it. Yep, starting scuff. Gotta love it. Oh, um, do you perhaps have my stream open and have the audio on on that? Mildly, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, scuff on my end. Okay. <laughs> Can't hear me coming from you. And Yuki, I think you should be fine now. Yeah, I think I'm okay. <laughs> you would like to do any introduction on your own there? Um, welcome back to Yuki Hase Gaming. We are oh, coming back oh, to... Oh, did I lose Yuki? What? Um, yeah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Do, do you, can you not hear me anymore? Okay, I see the problem. Um, <laughs> you had me, or I had myself muted on Discord. You were hearing me through the stream. <laughs> Gotta love the scum. Oh, okay. That's a little hot. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, but... you might need to rebalance your audio now. <laughs> Yeah, I will turn you down a little bit, but that's looking to be pretty good. If anyone in the chat says differently, okay. <laughs> we might try to readjust, but I think we're all good. I think but yes, so. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, everyone. We're here wrapping up the spring anime for 2023. The good, the bad, the dropped, and the I don't know what I just watched, but I think I liked it. <laughs> and Thank the you. I need a restraining order. Or eye bleach. <laughs> oh, there's quite too many of those on this list that uh, follow that. Um, um, well, at least criteria. Okay, we are going to start with this list. If you might have caught the starting stream or the midstream for this, we, we do have a previous ranking. I probably should have grabbed that. To check it out, but yeah, theoretically, it might have been a good idea for us to have that ready to go <laughs> next season. We'll <laughs> take it down in the improvement notes. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll pick it apart uh, in the post mortem. Yep. Okay, but trying to jump into our first show here, we have Nina Ninham to Kamano no Owl. Or Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. Ah, yes. This was definitely one of your picks earlier on. Yep, this is a very interesting... Uh, it's, uh, ro weird furry romance story. <laughs> of a human sacrifice to the King of Beasts to... Through circumstances of pop. End up well, not only falling in love, but getting engaged and... I'll say one thing that is interesting. It's like I enjoyed a post. Oh yes, I do like you romance, not the uh, will they, won't they side of that. That's fair. Uh, I will say for my part about this series that I still have reservations about uh, the art quality of the furry characters. Um, I, I really feel that they could have stepped that up, especially with how good the human characters look. It just it feels really out of place. Um, but that said, uh, the series has definitely had at least a few um, really legitimate emotional scenes or scenes that I thought were um, of particular note and interest in terms of... Um, Icon 1 VT. Being, Welcome to Yuki Kazi uh, Gaming Snappy. A, a I'll kind be of uh, thought-provoking. Welcome um, to Yuki Kazi Gaming Snappy. 
Uh, so, uh, I, I haven't actually gotten all the way through this one yet myself, but I have been catching up on it. I'm around, like, episode 9, I think. And, um, I, I can't, you know, speak to how it ends, but, uh, it, it has been pretty decent, at least. I, I would at least put it in, like, the, the B-rank territory. Yeah, be on that. Like, the one thing is I, I will definitely say, you know, also in advance, it's not just, it, while this is a main romance focus, you do get to see a lot of political stuff and class and racial stuff with the uh, aforementioned furry side of it kind of taking the scuff of, well, we don't want to point out any particular race. Yeah, it, it's kind of an allegory for racism and nationalism in general. Yeah. Which, and while I will agree with you that a lot of the, especially the background and side characters, are bland or not very detailed, almost all of the main characters, including even a lot of the furry ones, are pretty well designed. Although the, the li lizards are always tough. Yeah, the, the lizards are particularly scaling. bad. <laughs> They they almost kind of remind me of, like, the Canadians on South Park, where, like, their heads just don't move right. <laughs> yep, there is a bit of that. Although we do get a bit improvement later on when they go to the um, cat nation. The yes. princess from there is a adorable little kitten. Yeah, they, they actually managed to do well with a few of the characters, I'll grant you that. And um, Anubis's design, for instance, was pretty decent. But, um... I really think that they probably could have done a little bit better on the king, especially, uh, because he is such a main character, and they just couldn't really figure out how to make him look right in a lot of the poses and stuff most of the time, it seems like. Yep, there is a problem with his scale compared to everything else. While you do get some absolutely adorable shots with him holding the main female lead, um... There are a lot of other shots where he just looks yeah, I, I feel like disproportional. Uh, size difference is definitely a barely disguised kink for the writer of this show. <laughs> yeah. I, there's probably, like, you can't be this furry and not have a handful of kinks just floating around mm -hmm. in it. <laughs> okay, but you will say it's, you know, this one does definitely has a good story, decent general characters, but it does is held back by its animation. So you would put it in the B. I'd put it around B. Um, I, I would say that uh, you know, it's it's not also the best story I've ever seen. There there are moments where it really falls flat, but there are also moments that are really strong. Yeah. So. If you want to put it in the A territory, I'm pretty comfortable Welcome with that, to too. Welcome to Kikazi Gaming Snacking. Oh, okay, because I am leaning a little towards the A. This also might be just because I do not generally like romances, and this one has grabbed me on a pretty hard scale. Yeah, I can I can see that. If, uh, if you feel that it was able to pull you into a genre that you usually wouldn't be willing to watch, I can definitely uh, understand wanting to give it a few bonus points for that. Yep. Although it might be getting those because of the aforementioned furry aspect of it, honestly, but... Hey, we all have our biases. <laughs> yeah, but I could argue that there's a, you're going to see a lot more of those come out later, but that's why we have it. <laughs> two hosts here, and we're trying to balance out the scales. You know, a chart uh, doing likes and just stats might be a good idea for next season. <laughs> Put it on the list. I mean, okay. I, I'll, I'll uh, you know, say right out, I don't have a problem with furry characters. I just like to see them done well. <laughs> yeah. No, to be fair, American furry artists, Ameri all American furries are spoiled for good art. Because nobody does commissions like furry artists in America. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to our next little bit here. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to butcher all these Japanese names. Jigo Karaku. Jiri Kakuru. Or Hell's Paradise, if you're for our non-moon people. <laughs> uh, hey. so I, I didn't get very far in this one. Uh, not because I didn't like the show. Uh, I felt that as, as like a shonen action anime, it definitely had a lot of potential. It had some good sakuga. 
Um, it had some good, you know, animation and fight scenes from what I saw. Uh, the, obviously it had a, a very massive plot hole with its central plot in the first episode, but um, it wasn't the kind of show where that was super important. Uh, because it was really more about, like, visual spectacle and what was going on with the characters than it was about the plot. Um, that does, uh, if I might interject, it's, I, I have gone up to the current season. We are only on the first core of season one. The second mm -hmm. core should be coming out in the fall season. Um, but that plot point is, oh, very, I can't tell if it's intentionally or mildly touched on that. All right, so actually, a, a small, small synopsis of the, the show might be a good idea too for those sure yeah who still i think since we're, it, we're doing series wrap up at this point uh we can probably get away with minor spoilers as well so uh spoiler warning going forward uh all of these shows may contain minor spoilers we will try to keep the big plot twists under wraps but yes but major uh story on this one is an island was possibly the elixir of immortality is found but everyone who's sent there is killed or not does not come back at the very least. So the uh, old Japanese and Goku government decides to get a bunch of high end convicts okay, and followers Welcome and to send them out to this island, to which if they can return with the elixir, they will get a pardon. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just very amused by the uh, concept of high end convicts. <laughs> it's not wrong, but it's funny. <laughs> I, I will definitely give you that. The big plot hole is they also send guards with them who are capable of killing these top tier criminals who are all near killing machines and taking them down. So take that as you will. Yes, it of course begs the question, why bother sending the criminals if you're also sending these skilled warriors with them anyway? And then putting the skilled warriors in even more risk because now they have to deal with the dangerous criminals and whatever's on the island. <laughs> yep. Which, like I said, they they do kind of touch on why this might be the way it is to begin with, and why all why it was only one particular clan that are guards on this. But spoiler for that, and so far, getting a little further into it, there is a lot more mysteries to touch on this. The main character is given extra depth later on, which one of those, it's like, oh, I think I get why he's doing this. Then you get towards the end, it's like, wait, 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 hold the, hold the freaking phone. What? Yeah, I felt even in the which episodes I, I watched, he had pretty good um, character development going, and it's encouraging to hear that that may, may continue <laughs> throughout the series. I don't know if I would call it character development, but you just learn more about him? Well, character development is any time they reveal to you more about the character, whether that's a, a flashback or uh, a, a change in their current, uh, you know, understanding of the world around them uh, through either, uh, you know, learning and growth experiences that they have as you proceed, right? So, um... It's any time that they're they're uh, teaching us more about who this person is and what their motivations are, that would still be character development, right? Yep. No, I could definitely agree with that. I, I just thought it more in the literal sense of you're seeing this character grow and change as a person. But revealing who they are and what their real intentions are to the audience could also be a good growth on that one. Yeah. Um, and for that matter, that they did, uh, you know, even early on, have some of that growth and, and change as well. Uh, you know, we see very quickly uh, the main character having some uh, changes of heart that have to do with his relationship to um, his wife and to the other characters that are uh, around him, without going too deep into spoilers. Yeah. Which they also do. This... While it does start off as a focus on, I would say, two people, it does eventually turn into an ensemble act with more side characters getting episodes themselves and then inter being integrated into the main plot, I would guess? Or the ongoing plot. Yep, that's about Overall, all I can say about this one, since I haven't, uh, I haven't finished it yet. 
I wouldn't consider it dropped, it's just kind of on hold because uh, I've been watching it with somebody else and they haven't been available to finish it. <laughs> okay, um... Well, this is the, and this is also a definitely a more adult shonen for anyone who hasn't caught it yet. This is gory and bloody as all get out. Oh yes, definitely concur on that one. This is not a children's shonen. Yep. Um, the only question here is, I this is at least A tier. I would give this a hard A. The other question I have is, do I want to bump up to an S? Yeah, Which... I, I just don't know enough myself about where it ends up going to know if it deserves the S or not. Um, but uh, I, I, I feel it's pretty comfortable in the A category. If I will put this at the top, at the top of A. Definitely a good one. If you if you like shonen, if you like samurai shows, if you like shows that have a bit of a mystery to them, that you're not quite sure where things or where the plot is going to go. Because the one thing I will definitely say towards the back end of the series, when you when you meet the antagonist group, is they are beautifully done. And all the fights with them are amazing. Okay, then I think that about wraps it up. A high A. And all right, next one. Maho Sojo Magical Destroyers. Or if you're in the U U.S., just Magical Destroyers. <laughs> it would, such a weird thing to drop from the title. Um, but yeah. I, I can definitely see why. American audiences that aren't anime fans aren't quite sure what Maho Sojo is. Or if they're just a shonen fan, you're not quite sure what that is. Yeah, you got you got to step back from the uh, deep well every so often. Like, oh yeah, I believe I know what this is. Most average people don't. Um, but a very interesting uh, show, a modern day set where all otaku themes have been banned or illegalized. I would say, meaning not just anime, but if you're a wrestling fan, if you're a gun fan, if you're a race car fan, if you're the kind of person that has posters. Uh, things they really like decorated around their house that an average person that doesn't like that will look at it and go, okay, that's neat. You're one of these people. Yeah, just this a, is the world. Yeah, in, in the US, we've come to view the term otaku as being specific to anime, but in Japan, it is widely used for anyone who has a niche interest that they're fanatical about. And now, the one thing I, I don't know how. Did, did you manage to finish this one, Yugi? I did actually manage to finish this one, yes. Okay, so I, I, if anyone who have started this or took, takes a general look at it, you might have a punk feel for this one. If you're an old school anime fan or an old taku, you're like, hey, this kind of reminds me of old Gainax shows. Dear God, are you right? If you if you know the Gainax endings in shows and all that, <laughs> this show. Oh, it is a trip. It is a bonkers, crazy, nut job trip from beginning to end. And if you don't like... I don't have a word other than Gynax ending. Can you think of a better one you see on that? Um, if you don't like over-the-top, bombastic, crazy... Uh, acid trip, psychological bizarreness. <laughs> I, I think that might be a good way to put it. <laughs> yep. But it will not leave you satisfied. It'll but want to take for more, but in all of the best ways. I can... <sighs> I think... The, the main cast of Otaku Hero, Anarchy... Blue and Pink Chan, as well as the main villains all being absolutely bonkers. It's just a nice turn of events. Yeah. Uh, also, just want to point out that with this particular show, um, if you do end up watching this one, be sure to look at 
the opening and ending closely. I know that's something that a Daniela lot of people from... tend to uh, skip these days. Welcome to Yuki Cars but, and Gaming Snappy. Um, in this show, I feel that they're kind of uh, integral into uh, understanding some of what's going on in the show if you pay close enough attention to them. Uh, and they'll, they'll help you kind of piece together some of that weirdness that's going on in the later episodes. Yep, although a, a little piece of me wants to say this stuff, this show start, like has messages in it, but the drugs get in the way, it feels like, at some point on those. Uh, yeah, it has a little bit, again, this was another Gynax show, but it has that kind of FLCL or Fully Cooly, uh, depending on how you like to pronounce it, uh, feel to it, where um, the, you know, you, you get this sense that there's definitely a deeper meaning, but it's so weird and chaotic and random that it's very difficult to parse out what that meaning is. Yeah, at least like, at, at times. Some point it's a, yeah, at some point, it almost feels like they're trying to reference, you know, toxic otakusism or fandoms like that, but then they just throw it out because, oh, dear God, the sky opened up and an eye looked at me, and now I can't <laughs> feel my body. Not yeah. to mention the aforementioned actual drug trips in the show. This is true. The, the show does actually contain literal drug trips. So also, uh, content warning, drugs. <laughs> um, that said, uh, I think... For me personally, the only thing that uh, gives me any hesitancy about putting this in the S tier would be uh, just the fact that I don't think it's going to actually like catch on enough to become a cultural force. And I don't think that, uh, although it was very interesting, I don't think that it has anything about it that really is going to, like, have a lasting impact on anime culture. But I do think it has the potential to become, over time, an underground cult hit, um, which I think, you know, gives it still the, the potential to deserve that category. Yeah, this is one that you will watch episode probably one, maybe two, and you will love it or hate it. You can very much tell up front how you will feel on this show. There is no tw plot twist that will change up your feelings, even though there are several big ones in the show. It's all stuff that you are here for the ride. You knew what this ride was early on. If you don't like that, you should pro you probably aren't going to stick around. At the other side, it's been a long time since we've seen anything. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this absolutely... <laughs> Positively, unapologetically bonkers. Yeah, and that's definitely true, right? Like, although it's not recreating or redefining any of those things, it still feels fresh just because it's been so long since we've seen it. And uh, I, I think it's good that there's something exploring that niche in today's market. Yeah. And the fact that this is an original and not just a uh, adaptation. Uh, if you're good with it, Yuki, I think I will drop this in the S tier. I think I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay, then. And moving on from that one, we have our first Isekai. Isekai Sean won. Nadomo First Dittu. of many. <laughs> uh, summon to another world for a second time. Okay, this is also the first one I did not watch a complete run of. I caught about the first half of it, then came back for the ending because I thought I could still parse it out. And yep, about the ending was about what I expected. I didn't miss anything, and all I understood where all the characters were by. That part of it. Yeah, it, there really wasn't much to see in this show, to be honest. Uh, this is one of the ones I finished, um, but like, I, I wouldn't really recommend that anybody watch this one. 
uh, I would I would really recommend if you even started watching it, just drop it. You're not you're not going to get anything out of this one. There's no it, it, it's it, there's no substance. <laughs> there was a very interesting premise with the second time returning Isekai character, but it it doesn't go any. It's 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 just it's going through the same goddamn motions that the initial Isekai would go through. It's like. Oh yes, I'm going to return here and save them again. I'm going to go here and save them again. I'm going to go here and fix this again. To only go and <laughs> defeat the same person you saw him defeat in the opening flashback of when he left the world in the first place. Yeah, right. and and like the world is in the state that it's in because. He left it that way. <laughs> like, like the, all the problems that are going on really are kind of his fault. <laughs> so, Man. yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know. There's, there's... It, it's New Game Plus Isekai with all the uh, extra cheat codes unlocked. Yeah, I, I feel like it, had this been done drastically differently with the same concept, it could have been successful but between the low, obviously low budget and uh, everything just being kind of hampered by not being very unique or interesting and uh, not being very cohesive, um, I just, I can't give this one points for, for anything. It's, it's definitely no. a solid D tier in my book. Um, I don't even want to call that... Honestly, like we, as we will see later on this list, low budget doesn't mean low quality. There are plenty. There are a, a well, okay. There's at least one show yeah. who has probably <laughs> half this budget, but three times. No, I don't even go like just God to, over at least t over ten times the quality in this one. Yeah, with half the animation substance, half the budget. It's like it was the hey God. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, I want to throw this straight into dropped. I don't. Like, get on, I would say try it if you think you would like it. Because, you know, Isekai is a... We like our garbage. We like our Isekai garbage. I'm not going to argue that, but... Yeah? This is by the numbers, by the book. It's... I, I will well consume animated. trash, but I will not recommend it as delicious to other people. <laughs> yep, I'm going to throw you a dropped. Mr. Reincarnated in the World the Second Time. We will not be coming back to you. All right. Anything more you would like to add on that one? Or is the dropped the dropped? No, I, I think that's fine. Like, I didn't actually drop it, which is the only reason that I wasn't putting it in dropped. <laughs> but, like, I, 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 put it I, there I would because... recommend to others that they drop it like it's hot, though. So I think it's still reasonably yep. appropriate. <laughs> yep. I would say drop shows, even if like you finished it, if you don't, if you would recommend not watching it, because there are there are so many, especially with the how, like we can see how big that massive this list is. The reason I almost wanted to take out the D tier is you have better. There are there are things you can do better in your time. There are better shows, but I, I'll bump this one up to D, just because we still have this. Yeah, I mean, okay. that's, that's really what the D tier is for in my book. Like, we watched it, but it's terrible and we don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I can see the drop being the, uh, we watched it and we couldn't finish it then, I guess. Yeah, it, we either watched it and couldn't finish it or watched it and, like, um... Absolute garbage. Absolutely unapologetically. Not, like, blah, garbage. I, not, well, I, I mean, either couldn't bring ourselves to finish it or, like just for whatever reason, didn't get past the first couple of episodes and, and can't really comment on it. Yep. Okay, then. I, and I think with this one, we're to the first one I have no idea about. Skip to Loafer, and if you're American, skip and Loafer? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, Why was that changed? Well, because uh, two in Japan is often used in uh, the sense that Andes, um, but that doesn't, 
that doesn't localize well. <laughs> ah, duh. But everything else? Uh, okay, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Translations. They are a problem. So. Blah, blah, blah. Would you like to do a synopsis on this one? Did you watch this one, Yuki? No, I I really didn't. I, I got through, like, the first two or three episodes, but then I just never got a chance to circle back to it. Um, it's not that the show was bad or anything. It was just, like, kind of average, vanilla, like, like your, your, your typical uh, romance series for the season. Um, I didn't have any particular complaints about any of it. It's just... With so much else on the list, I didn't manage to circle back to it. And it being average actually kind of worked against it because it meant that it was something I wanted to pay attention to, but there were too many other shows that were better that I wanted to pay attention to. So I ended up either watching stuff that was total trash that I didn't pay attention to because that was the niche I had available. Or I watched stuff that was good and, you know, uh, spent my time on those, but never really made it back to this. <laughs> yep, that is the, um, the, that is the biggest uphill. Oh, uh, with, um, with these, um, Oof. uh, rope, sorry, trying to. Things in yes, Panda. I will hydrate and stretch. Thank you. Um, with romance <laughs> genres in general, is, that, by is Panda. A, <laughs> that is a throwing stuff at you. Yeah, he's throwing stuff at me. <laughs> yep. Um, is this, this genre is is a old hat one? There are there are masterpieces, great ones, trash, classics, comfort food. It's there are God, I would say. A few series harder mm -hmm. than romance. Yeah, Sorry, girl. redeem. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I'm watching that too. I'm seeing the mother. It's a, there is a problem with breaking into the romance, especially modern day romance shows. There are at least four of them every season, and this is a series that has been done to death and back that very few shows innovate on. Yeah, and I, I still have definitely a place for a well-executed romance genre. This one just, um, it, it failed to have a hook, and in this uh, particular meta, so to speak, uh, being bland is probably the greatest crime. Um, you're, you're better off being a hate watch than you are being middle of the road. Oh yeah, which there's a couple of these, like I said, later on this list, and I can see it coming. That's um definitely on there. That's don't don't go don't be safe. Don't pay by the numbers. Go crazy. Go out there. Fail yeah. great. Fail spectacularly. Or I don't I don't want to say don't try because go always try. Always try, but <laughs> well, yeah, it's a failure go big or, or success. <laughs> yep. Uh, so skipping so, over, I, I like if I were actually reading it based off of so what I'd seen, it would probably be a, a C. Welcome to you but um, I, I would probably be more comfortable with us putting it like in did not watch because neither of us really watched much of it. Yep, yeah, it it has to stand out in some way or have some good hook. Which let's moving on to our next one. I think this one did so. Kimi wa hagogo insomnia. Insomniacs after school for us Englishies. Okay, so you actually ended up getting to watch some of this one then. I caught clips of this. I unfortunately for the season I did not have high dive, which this one is locked. Was no, I should say locked on to. It's a part of. And it, I it just is a high dive I did manage to yeah. yeah, I did manage to get clips. It has looked good, and I know you did catch a bit of this, didn't you? Uh, I think I actually finished this one off, yeah. Alright, I will let you have the mic. Okay. Um, so, I feel like this series did a really, really good job with, uh, exploring the 
insomnia aspect of the show, which I think is something that increasingly is very relatable for a huge portion of the audience these days. Uh, and probably even more so it. in the anime viewing audience and, and the gaming audience, right? Um, and I... I really liked that they went into the reasons that the characters were experiencing this and the fact that uh, each of them had their own unique traumas and baggage that they were carrying that really contributed to them having that experience. Um, and I thought it was kind of a, a refreshing romance genre take that the characters' attraction to each other was based off of a mutual uh, understanding of Anime news a, with the UK agent. I've a been blessed. niche problem that they were both experiencing and their ability to comfort each other over that problem. Um, because if you look at the vast majority of romance anime, it's usually just like a high school crush or love at first sight thing. Um, or like a, hey, we've been spending time together, and we've developed feels because of it. But there's rarely such a strong underlying uh, cause being examined for uh, a relationship developing like this. And I feel that that added a real sense of realism and weight to the relationship that the characters formed. Um, so, you know, uh, this one to me uh, was, was definitely a solid watch. Uh, if you are a fan of the romance genre, or if, um, you know, something like Insomnia or... Uh, you know, similar kind of, like, anxiety issues or something like that are things that you have struggled with, um, then I think you'll identify with this anime. Um, so based on that, I would probably put it pretty solidly in at least the A rank. Um, it, it's got really nice animation and everything, too. Also, if you're a fan of, like, photography or stargazing, uh, those would also be, uh, big draws to this for you. Um, so... I, like, I, I wouldn't quite put it in S tier, only because uh, I don't think this one's going to have a very broad reach, and I don't think, again, that it's, it's like, redefining the genre or anything like that. But I do think it's, it's a very, very solid watch if, uh, you know, any of those things I just mentioned speak to you. Yeah. Like I said, the bit I have part of it is... It's interesting to see a romance that's not just, oh, high school, or we're hanging out, like you said, but actually, oh, hey, I have this problem, and I'm going here, or we have this hobby, and I'm kind of getting to like it's It's very interesting to see that side of it. A, I don't want to say more adult-style romance, but it's... It, it kind of is, it is, though. It's more of a, a mature style of romance um, that, that is based on, you know, some, something with a little more depth, depth and substance. And it, there, there is, like, a hobby that they're sharing as well. Um, but I think it's important to note that there's uh, kind of like a give and take with that hobby, where it's not just that, oh, this is something both characters are interested in, but rather that uh, it's one character's interest and the other one is supporting them in that interest, which is also unique and unusual. That could be a very big part of what you're a good relationship can be too. Yeah, these are all things that are are very core and fundamental in developing a lot of strong real world relationships. Um, so from that perspective, I, I felt the writing was really strong there. And yes, I know. I'm sorry, Panda. I see. Ooh, there's your redeem. <laughs> and yes, you have been blessed. <laughs> um, okay, so I would say I'll, I'll even put this above. Um, Beast on the A tier too, because yeah, it does feel a more solid overall show. Yeah, I I would definitely say, uh, you know, if I'm looking just at like my emotional response to what I saw, um, definitely much stronger in that one than than the other one, uh, and, and a lot more frequent scenes that had a powerful emotional impact. 
Okay, let's. Let's go on the end. Okay, with another one I have zero idea on. Alice Gear Ages Expansion. Uh, I okay. believe. This is the one that I watched the first episode of and was like, nope, no more. <laughs> yeah, this one, I, I I, caught that and was... Now, the purpose for this show is, let's, let's quick on the synopsis. Centuries ago, mankind abandoned the planet Earth after the vice, a race of mechanical aliens, drove them from the home of the life and trip in space. You don't get any of that feel from episode one. None at all. It takes place on a beach. And none of it makes any sense. <laughs> There's it's... ninjas and giant robots in a foot race, and none of it is explained. <laughs> it's, uh, like, there, this, this isn't part, like, as far as I could, like, I don't know if Alice Gear is something I'm just not aware of, but this, this feels like it's a spinoff or part of another series. I think what happened is this is a gotcha game tie-in. I seem to recall reading but it, that. But even then, it's like there should you you can't open it in the middle of a show like it's this like yeah you, I mean, you, you I, don't start with the beach episode right. There's such a thing as in medias res, but this is not how you do it. And also, um, I got the sense based off of the fact that they led off of with a beach episode that uh, the. The fan service was probably the primary draw here, but the fan service wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, all the characters look incredibly bland, I would say. Bland, just flat. Yeah, like I don't mean like flat Ooh, in terms of their the their episode. tops. Like they t they definitely had some busty Kizzy characters, but I mean Land Welcome in Yuki terms Kazi of gaming snappy. or or or, or uh, flat in terms of like the shading and everything. Like there was no depth and detail to any of the the curves and everything that make a character visually appealing for fan service shots. Yep, and Panda, there's the full name if you were wondering about that. Um, but zero context. That honestly, like that's about what the show is. Zero context. Here's fan service. Go have fun. Um, I did not watch. Asterisk. Lament, I, I asterisk. would put it under dropped for me because I definitely dropped that like it was hot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. I'll definitely give on that. But okay. So next up on the list, um. Oh, here comes another butchery. Isekai one turn killed Nisama. On Dohai no Isekai Sekataso. Oh, no, no. That, that should have been Nisama, not Nisama. Nisama would be brother. Nisama is sister. <laughs> N E E? Yeah, N is N. Is N. Yeah. N is N I I. Boot speak. <laughs> okay, English name. My one hit kill sister. Yes. Do you like isekai? Do you like incest? Do you like incestuous isekai? <laughs> when the pimps it's and the aggressively incestuous not... isekai. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> it like On the female side too, which I mean, it's good to see the other side of that. But hi, Kizzy. Welcome. And yeah, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah, uh, so, uh, this one, it, it, it's one of those shows that, as a reviewer, puts you in a very awkward place, right? Because trying to at all defend this show uh, it kind of puts you in the crosshairs for a lot of people. But um, I will say uh, a couple things, like the, the ending themes, for instance, uh, they really went overboard on that. Like... If you like kind of like Jojo esque uh posing and uh things like that, I then, you then those e uh, ending Japanese. themes are uh, the, the, I should say the the ending credits uh are an interesting watch. Um the show as a whole uh 
I mean, the title says it all. You know what this show is going into it, and you either like that or you don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, you, there, there is a hang-up, and you will either be hung up on it, or you will like it as the isekai trash it is. Exactly. Um, because while it is, while it does have decent fan service and decent animation, there is that big asterisk if and... He's only making a sound. Brenda, don't try to convince me to move speak, but yes, this is a... <laughs> um... Uh, once again, it's... Like I, I said, mean, it, it, you, if I'm If I'm looking it. at this objectively... And I'm, uh, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to look at this uh, from the lens of uh, not judging it for its uh, content tags. Then I would probably say this falls around like a B or a C. Um, the, the overall animation, uh, like most of the quality actually isn't all that high. But it does have a few decent moments where you can tell that they dropped to the budget, and that makes it yeah, feel sorry. like I a higher production. Yeah, I understand. have a hard enough time with English. Yeah, yeah, but um, what again? It's okay. The other fact we have to calculate in here, because we do have to grade on a curve. This is, <laughs> this is a vacuum. This is turning into a genre somehow. Welcome You're right, it is, yes. <laughs> Somehow this is a sub-genre in the isekai of... Oh! Hello! I think they were blood relative, too, because, well, God, most shows can't even, can't even at least tote that around, like, not blood-related. Well, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the main characters were, but they did give you a, uh, not actually even a sister, uh, sister light alternative in the show, hoping, I think, that that would appease people who aren't into the main romance. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, getting back on track with the, yeah, the, the, the big elephant in the room, um, this is a genre in this, if this is something besides isekai, but you want to see people romancing their close family members, there are better options, God! I I have to agree. Like, if if that is your thing, there are shows out there that have done it better and make it more attractive than this one does in terms of like aesthetics, at least. <laughs> um, okay, let's 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 put a pin to this because we're, we're, we're going uh, yeah, to Yeah, I, I think the more we say, the more we dig ourselves into holes with this kind of thing. So, uh, you are going into C. You are an interesting genre, you. But uh, <laughs> moving on. Opus Colors. Okay, well, this one has a whole bunch of male characters in the thumbnail. And uh, that immediately meant that I wasn't probably going to end up watching it. <laughs> if there was something that wasn't going to make the cut, that was probably it for me. <laughs> oh, not a Yahweh fan? No. Doesn't, uh, doesn't click into my genres. Okay, this, uh, I think this was another High Dive exclusive, if I remember correctly. I'm looking at the score on this, and like, doesn't look good for me either. Can you read more? No, this one was Crunchyroll. Yeah, this one didn't even pop up on my feeds. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, I, I, I hard missed this one, and I, oh, I'm doing better this season. Also, I don't think this was even a yaoi thing. I think it was actually, like, an art-based shonen, maybe? Um, but either way, like, just, you know, there, sometimes you can tell by the cover of the book, so to speak, uh, that you're going to be in for a certain experience, right? And when you look at the poster art for this, uh, the way you've got this character layout and people standing around and everything just tells me right away this one isn't part of my genre interests. <laughs> yep. And don't worry, if I'm harassing you, I because I know you. You can you can feel free to berate me a little bit. I don't mind. I know what my I know what my quality is. Um thank you for the hygiene. Yeah the, Yeah this is a this was a hard did not watch for me. 
for me as well. The same. Yeah. yeah. Just it, it. Your cover looks like early two thousands cheap anime, and honestly, that's about the worst time for anime for me. Yeah, I just could not even. Yeah, it. this uh, um, you know, it, okay. Average score was forty eight percent. By the way. Uh, so I feel pretty yeah, comfortable um, in saying that this one falls under the category of trash. Um, and if it's your kind of trash, great. Uh, it just wasn't my kind of trash, so. <laughs> yep, exactly. Okay, then. Oh, I think we have one that's slightly a little bit better at the... Um, 2003, I know orchestra or blue orchestra for everyone else. Uh, this was also a did not watch for me. I didn't catch any of this show. Uh, it just, frankly, wasn't even on my radar. Yep, this was another... Oh, hey, look at another high school musical with possible romance interest and life less. It's... Oh, you, you, you... If you want to throw your hat into that genre with a generic series that looks okay, best of luck to you, but... There's a lot to get through, and I don't have time for... That looks okay most of the time. Yeah, I see the average score on this one was about 68, 69%. So, yeah, I'm um, seeing 7 out of 10s, but yeah. Yeah, there again, I think this one fell victim to uh, the phenomenon I was talking about earlier, where if something is aggressively average, it's just not going to get attention in... in a season with so much competition. Which is every season nowadays, dear God. Um, it's looking that way, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to do another quick throw this into Do Not Watch because this is a bleh. And now... <laughs> now... You know what? Hold, I'm going to move this one to the back of the list because That's I'm going to go off on that one. Yeah. And... I understand the reasoning. <laughs> we will we will come back to you. We will come back to you. Um Okay, really back on that. Or a tiny gina or a galaxy next door. Yeah, okay, so this one um early on I, I don't think you watched this one, right? Nope. If it was a high dive one and especially a romance one, I skipped the majority of those. That's what I thought. Um, so. Spotify. This, uh. Welcome to Yuki Kazi Gaming Actually, I think Snappy. this one might have been Crunchyroll, but either way, uh, it definitely did fall into the romance genre. And, uh, what I would say is, uh, although this one showed, uh, some interesting potential in the early episodes, it very quickly became uh, kind of by the numbers, uh, you know, dime a dozen budget romance anime uh, in many senses. Um, most of what was unique about it became just kind of a convenient plot MacGuffin at some point, and uh, it, it really kind of failed to deliver on the potential that I had hoped it was setting up. Um, it was still okay, but it really fell into that, like, C-tier average territory. There really yeah, wasn't ultimately because... anything to make it stand out at the end of the day, and it was kind of a little bit on the disappointing side that there wasn't, because it looked like there could have been at the start. Yeah, because especially with the Nate title and all that, it looked like there were some very interesting concepts floating around in this one, but I didn't hear anything after that. It four was sitting once again at an um, uh, anime list at a seven average, so mid tier and bland is generally where it comes out. Oh, and my red and my blue filter just kicked on. Neat. Everything's going to get a little bit more chrome-like on my screen for a while, audience. <laughs> but, so, how long, so you said you got about halfway through this one that you said you keep? Oh, no, I, I think I actually finished this one. Uh, I, I just, uh, it didn't, it, it wasn't uh, as 
You can't tell if you finished it. That says a lot. Huh? They said you finished it and you can't remember if if you actually did or not. Yeah, it it left that solid of an impression. Um, so that that's why I'm saying it. It's probably a C tier. Like it it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. Okay. And from there we have. Oh, let's see what we got next on this list. Yugisha Gashida. The legendary hero is dead. Oh, okay. I was having a little bit of a hard time seeing the thumbnail on that one. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think this was originally kind of one of your picks, right? It was one I was looking at, but I think you, uh, during our mid-roll, you pushed it a little bit more. Okay, that's this fair. It's <laughs> a very interesting shonen fantasy adventure. Once again, the legendary hero is dead. It is very much of, oh, this nobody from this village kills the legendary hero out to save the demon lord, and now must take his place to do it instead. Yeah, uh, I think it's fair to say if you're a fan of, like, the fairy tale style, uh, fairy tale the anime, not fairy tale the, the genre of books, um, yeah. then uh, this one will probably have a certain amount of appeal to you. Because it has that kind of feeling in its, like, casual use of humorous fan service. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, also, it definitely had if some you have a thigh too, fetish, but, hmm? you will also enjoy this. If you what? Oh, a thigh have fetish. A thigh <laughs> yes, uh, tags include thighs and stockings. Um... <laughs> Which is becoming more and more common in Japan. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, neat. Yeah. <laughs> no judgments. Um, so, uh, I, I think, you know, my take on this one is uh, it, it devolved a little bit towards the end into uh, just kind of a, a pretty standard shonen arc in a lot of ways. But... Um, it still, it was, it was a fun ride. Like I, I think this one it deserves at least probably in the B territory. Um, I, I don't I'll think a lot of. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I had a lot of '90s fantasy anime feels. If you were familiar with those old, especially OBA series that would only get two, three, four episodes, and wonder what a full run of one of those would look like. It that's feels like that's that. pretty fair, yeah. Like it, like those who hunt elves or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I I get that that kind of sense too. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Which aggressively w- above average. <laughs> yeah. Which it would probably get a lot lower rating, but that is a genre that has been very dormant for a very long time. So. I will throw you up and be. I you were fun, you were interesting, you did manage to stand out because once again, it was also fun to see a hero who, well, trash wasn't OP as oh my god, or had something that just broke the world. Yeah, he did have to fight for everything he got. It's very much a uh, anti-hero fantasy series. Yeah, I will give it that. With plenty of interesting fan service. <laughs> wanted or not. Uh, also, uh, small points to it for diversity of fan service. Uh, if you're the sort of person, I've mentioned this before for this series, that has complaints about how it's only ever, you know, the female characters that get the fan service scenes, uh, you will you will be pleased to see that this one is relatively equal opportunity in its fan service. Although, it definitely does develop a strong lean towards the female characters and the aforementioned thighs and stocking thing. Um, it, it still does uh, make sure to throw some some cheesecake out there for those who enjoy it. Although, if you are putting stockings on radishes... <laughs> Best of luck to you. You've already lost at life, just like the main character. 
pretty much. Okay, next up we have Washimo no Yuri wa Watch to go this. Or Yuri is my job. Yeah. So I'm I'm guessing you never got around to watching this one, right? I I uh, nope. I'm not gonna even defend myself. I I locked saw a little bit of this, I saw a little bit more of this later on, and I just bounced off of it like a trampoline. <laughs> that's that's fine. It's I think it definitely uh, is kind of not your genre in in you know especially at the surface level um this one it's it's definitely not like s tier but i i feel like it probably falls pretty solidly in the a or b territory um i want to note specifically that uh it did a very good job of HTTPS giving kind of a realistic, um, at least in terms of, of the way that Japanese culture is, look into uh, the nature of a, what, what a uh, female love attraction actually looks like in Japanese society. And the trials that you kind of face if that is your orientation. Uh, because for those not familiar, uh, although Yuri is a genre, uh, uh, the reality is that in day-to-day -day Japan, it is not an accepted practice to be a lesbian. Um, and so... Uh, there's there's definitely this strong societal stigma, and a lot of shows dance around that a lot. Um, but I think this or just one, do it horribly. Yeah, this one uh, tackles it pretty directly though, which was very interesting to see to me. Um, it doesn't get into that until a little bit later in the series, um, but uh, I I think if you're interested in something that goes beyond the typical surface level of what you usually see in most Yuri anime, um, then this is a show for you. Uh, the characters have some, some interesting things going on with them as well, uh, that kind of set this up to, um, to have some unique interactions between them. And uh, the fact that they have it being kind of a Yuri anime within a Yuri anime, where all the characters are pretending that they're part of this uh, fantasy, like, Yuri genre uh, production... Yeah, right? Yeah, it's it's a cafe, but like the it's almost like a stage performance that they're involved in. That's like an ongoing ad lib, um, that takes place in this this defined setting for them, um, and the way that they use that to uh kind of juxtapose almost uh what what we usually see in a Yuri anime against that backdrop of what it's like in the real world, uh, I think has some value and merit uh, that gives this some real substance. Yeah, hopefully on that, which, once again, I, I do like to bring that up. We have seen that in a few more shows, because for those unaware, they don't only experience Japan through anime and other memes and her. They are a fairly regressive, traditionalist society, and if you are familiar with how gay rights and shows were done in the 90s for the U.S., I would say that's where Japan is about right now. Yeah, it's, it's fair to say that it's been pretty typical in terms of things like that for, well, in terms of culture in general, for Japan to follow behind the U.S., 
by about 20 or 30 years. Um, like, it, we, we see it in, like, music and things like that, too, even. Uh, it just takes a while for these uh, concepts to kind of permeate in, but as there's this slow exposure from other cultures, it, it starts to propagate over time. Um, and... There was something else I was going to say off of what you just said, but I already forgot what it was. It's good to see, I would say it's it's good to see good representation like this in anime because while it has been there, it's been mostly fan service. It's good to see an adult take on some of this too. Plus. Yes, it is. Welcome um, to and you, you reminded me of snacky. what it was that I was uh, thinking of, um, which is that these these. Uh, Series in general, and the content in general coming out of Japan, we have to remember to examine it in the cultural context lens, because um, it's easy for people in the U.S. to judge something as being, uh, for instance, uh, a detriment to something like gay rights because of, of how something is portrayed, but if you put it in the cultural context of where it's coming from, it may actually be highly progressive. Um, a, a more Western example I could give of this is if you look at something like Monty Python, where uh, things like uh, cross-dressing were frequently a source of humor in the show, uh, there are those who today might take that as being um, you know, kind of, kind of unacceptable or kind of detrimental to that rights movement. But if you look at it in the context of when it was done and when it was released and how it was, uh, something that was only just barely permissible at the time in terms of that content and in terms of being able to get past the censorship only because it was humor, um, then it changes the lens on that because now you're looking at a situation where this is now something that is disruptive to the establishment and helping to normalize uh, these values rather than being Welcome detrimental to, to them, at Snappy. least within the cultural context they were created in. Welcome to you, and that's a lot of words, <laughs> but um, I, I think it's, uh, it's important to recognize that relevance, that even these, like, kind of trash Yuri anime, uh, that this one kind of um, uh, refers to uh, in its exploration, have their own set of value in terms of being able to uh, to legitimize that, especially for a younger audience who is going to start helping revolutionize that change within the society. Yep. Social paradigms are a gradual shift that has to be taken step by step, even if those steps are detrimental for what people consider later down the road. You yes. have to start somewhere, good or bad. Exactly. Okay, so would you say C, or would you like to throw this one up to Welcome to Yuki I, I would say this snappy. one was kind of A or B territory for me. Um, I know you didn't watch it, so we can maybe average that out to a kind of a high B. Uh, I, I would lower my respect on this just because it's outside of my genre on this one. Yeah. Once again, this is part of the reason we do have love having a co-host, is sometimes stuff isn't for you, but doesn't mean it's not bad. You have to look at that from a different grain. Or increasingly these days, sometimes you just didn't have time to get to it, but maybe someone else did. <laughs> yes, thank you. Which, maybe we should make, we should divide up next season's anime? <laughs> uh, we, can, we can try. Uh, try and divide and conquer mm. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, there, there's some stuff on there I've already bounced off of hard that I just could not stomach. Well, maybe you can't, but okay. Back to this season. Let's see, what do we have up here next? Uh, the Konosuba spinoff. Which I believe we initially put on here then decided against. We were trying to do 
Uh, other way around. Yeah. Originally, we didn't put it on because it's, uh, you know, off of an established property. But because it was uh, so unique, we decided to add it onto the list. In terms of not really being like a sequel or a proper part of the established timeline or anything. Okay, I think we can do that. The problem being, I think we were both... I think we just came off of the season a little swamped. I don't know you. I never was able to watch this one. I only got about halfway through this one. Um, I, I wouldn't say that this was bad, but it definitely didn't live up to uh, what I, you know, would, would hope it would from the Konosuba franchise name. Um, so... I, I'm comfortable putting this in, uh, like, the did-not-watch category or something like that, because neither of us really got to finish it to be able to, to properly evaluate it. Um, but if I had to uh, give it, like, a tentative rating for people based off of what I have seen, this is probably a C-tier show. See, I can have to say that. The biggest problem I have with, like, a lot of these spinoffs, too, is if you have an ensemble cast, a lot of times, their best part of each, even the best characters, is them bouncing off the other characters, the straight person, the offbeat character. And when you have an a series focusing on the gag character, well, th there's a reason the Planet Sheen and the Petrick Star show aren't liked. But I, this one looked a little bit better than those. Sorry to, to hold any of the Konosuba fans who are angry at me for putting that next to those shows, or if you're a normal person, you have no idea what those shows are and don't care. <laughs> but C felt like a very good spot for this. If you were a Conan Super fan, this looked like something you would enjoy. If not, start with Conan Super, then maybe come back around to this one. Yeah, if you're a fan of Megumin in particular, this might be worth a watch for you. Um... But if you haven't watched Konosuba, I, I definitely couldn't, in good conscience, recommend this one to you. Yep. Okay, now for a weird one. Did Oshii you no get to Ko. watch any of this one? I, I fast-forwarded through the movie opening and watched the last episode. I see. Okay. Um, so, I will, I will say, uh, and you, you already kind of touched on this, uh, that the first thing, um, before we even get into the content of the show, is that the runtime of the first episode of this really confused me early on. Um, it, those who watched our, our previous streams might remember me being very perplexed as to this being about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half for the first episode, and then seeing that it had 12 episodes, and just having no idea what was going on. Um, if you were in Japan, then you would know that this had a movie release in the theaters for episode one, which has never been done before. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because the overall quality was good and because that is something that is a complete paradigm shift for the entire industry by my criteria this gets an automatic s it, it like a, like you said the quality on this was shockingly good even from beginning to last although skimming through a bit more of this this story feels a little odd to me. Oh, the story is very bizarre, yes. Because <laughs> I have I've talked to other people about this, and everything I hear about this is in idol, anime, reincarnation, family... Isekai, idol, anime, uh, murder mystery. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, if you would like to be intrigued about a show, yes. you have this one. Uh, I, I will say that uh, while it is weird, it is weird in a way that doesn't fail to be 
interesting and make you want to understand that weirdness. I don't want to talk too much about the content on this one because this is a show that everything is a spoiler for. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. All right, so we will. I can. I am good with just dumbing this into a rating. Uh, where are you wanting to put this one again? Uh, I by my criteria because this one is literally a paradigm shift for the industry and did something that we've never seen done before. Uh, it, it goes S tier. All right, I will throw you up in the S because I guess it is. If I would have had more time, if I honestly if I would have had high dive, honestly, I probably would have thrown this one much much higher. But I did not have the time. I did try to catch up, but this was too much too uh too much for me to dig into all at once. Yeah, and with the next season already looming and the amount of content we're expecting in that one, it's a little overwhelming even for those of us who are very dedicated fans to keep up with it all. <laughs> I, I could put in a, I could put in a radius amount of time in the anime. And I'm having trouble with this this yeah. point. Um <laughs> Although the next season does feel lighter, thank God. But um, okay. I think oh, we I think got we some extra our... bloat from some series that were delayed and released later when they weren't supposed to have been. Yeah, that might have been it. But okay, we have one I was actually able to catch up on. Edome Elf or Otaku Elf. Yeah. Um. The art quality on this was very high, I will give it that, in terms of, like, uh, any given still shot you look at is going to look beautiful. They really went overboard with all of the, like, uh, the filtering and, and things like that, uh, on the After Effects, to give every shot kind of a, a very highly rendered feel. Um, that... However, is is pretty much all I can say in defense of this show because, frankly, even as someone who's into the kind of subject matter that this show was predicated on, it was boring. This is a gag series that has a joke in a with the, is based in its premise, and if that doesn't, and if you come off episode one thinking that was. Okay, you are not going to enjoy this series. You if you if this if episode one did not make you laugh, if did not like make you laugh out loud, and like you actually found it pretty hilarious, you will not enjoy the rest of this series. Yeah. Also, this there, is a very character-driven series. Don't expect any kind of plot or anything like that out of it. Or fan service, for that matter. Uh, I, I know that on the surface, enough. it looks like this should be a fan service series. It is not. Um, yep, yeah, uh, it's... Like, honestly, I, I, I want to say more about it, but it's, it, it's... It's gag is its premise. It doesn't go much deeper than that. Yeah. It, if you want, if you wanted a feel good, if you if you don't mind the dip, did this have a dub? I yeah, I believe it did have a dub actually. Yes. Um, it, it is. It, it falls into the uh kind of the healing anime genre a little bit, but I don't feel it does a good job in that respect either. No, nope, it's very. It's it's a comedy healing anime that came off mid and. I would say, even compared to most romances, that's something you cannot do. Because that is a genre that has to lure you in and make you feel really, really good. Yeah, and, and if you're going to have a character-driven series, there has to be some kind of tension or, or something between those characters to make it work. And or a little more depth to them. Yeah, and in, in this one, there just isn't. I... Uh, one of the only things I can really say for it is if you're a Japanese history nerd and want to learn some weird Japanese history facts, it does cover some of those occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the, the problem I have with this is is it 
Do you consider this a D or a drop? I, I would put it under D because I did complete the show. I just kind of wish I hadn't. <laughs> yep. That's, 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 like I said, that's almost where I would, I would want to put them in the drop. Like, is this a series that... Is this trash you could recommend to somebody, or is this trash that you say shouldn't even be tried? Yeah, I, I think almost the argument is that um, maybe what we should have is an F tier. <laughs> Just say, like, no, this is aggressively bad and shouldn't be watched by anyone. <laughs> Yeah, that might be part of the list for next time. Okay, well, I guess we can leave this in D at the moment. Okay. Now I'll go right to a series that had interesting, uh, very interesting premise and really um, interesting start. My Home Hero. Yes. Um, I am I'm very eager to finish watching this one, uh, but this is one of the series I've been waiting for somebody else to finish watching with me. Uh, so I got kind of hung up on this one, and I haven't had a chance to finish it out. Um, I, From what I've seen, it's very solid, very interesting, and if you were a fan of Monster, uh, this is definitely a series for you. Yeah, I very much the same feeling. The problem I had with this one was, this does not feel like a good week-to-week -week show. If you are in a binge mood, if you would like a... Um, Murder drama? Something like that, yeah. Uh, drama suspense, sorry. That's the text there. Yeah, I, something I can like definitely that. see this. This is done very well with a very interesting story and premise. I, I really want to avoid spoilers in this one because there is a lot of good stuff here. But if you are curious on a family pushed too far with murder involved and good people trying to navigate that kind of situation... It's a very, very well done series so far. It just, oh god, you you gotta binge this sucker. It's like week if, to week. This is this is not a good show. If you are an anime fan who also enjoys series like Breaking Bad, this is the series for you. Yep, I will. I will, I will go into that one. I'll. Hmm. I I want to put this one up into the B's just because I did like it, but. At the same point, like I, said, I haven't finished this one either. It's just I have to be in the I have to be in the you know mindset the, the time frame. This, to binge this one it. is not necessarily an easy watch, and like you said, yes, it, it is um, more of a binge than a, a week to week. Um, I, I agree on both of those points. Uh, I, I definitely feel it's pretty solidly from what I've seen in the, in the, at least the A or B tier. Um, so I, I'm pretty comfortable in putting it up in that level somewhere. I, I I think it would be a disservice to put it any lower. All right, I'll put it at the top of the B tier for us, but just because either of us have been able to finish it just because of its style. Very good, but it, you have, it has to be very specific. It, it's a so, chewy series. It's not an easy-watching series. Nope. And a... A Finnish dub, I think, would really push this over, too. Okay, next up looks like Mashal. Mashal, or if you have the English version, Mashal, Magic, and Muscle. I don't know why the English added the subtext to that, or... Yeah, especially because Mashal is clearly not a word that you're going to see anywhere else. I think it's just because in Japanese they like to concatenate things together um, and it's more obvious to them that it's two words spliced uh, but they probably figured that other audiences might not uh, catch on to that as well. Okay, either way, it's it's a very well done series. Congratulations, it, this is a Shonen Jump top tier series. This has been one that's been at the top of their run, very good. If you would like a premise for this, have you ever wondered what a uh, show about Saitama going to Hogwarts would be like? This is that show. So this one, <laughs> yep. yep. In a world full of magic, Meshul Bernhardt is the only one who cannot cast it. But he lifts like a boss. And so... likes cream puffs. 
Yes, very much like Scream Puffs. Uh, personally, I didn't actually manage to get all the way through this one. Um, so I, I'm not sure, you know, how it, how it starts to pan out, but it felt like it was definitely starting to go in a pretty standard shonen direction, just with, uh, you know, more of a comedy bent to it. Um, yep. nothing wrong with that, uh, but for me, that's, uh, pretty, like, A or B territory. Yep. The one thing I will say is the opening episodes, like a lot of longer-running shonen, do leave a lot to be desired. There is a lot of momentum and a lot of world building to be built up to. That being said, there are, have been plenty of shows that <laughs> Black Clover have uh, done their first arc a lot worse than yeah. this one. Once they introduce one or two of the side characters, it becomes a lot more likable, a lot more more enjoyable. Why the main character Mashal is a fun character. He is at his best when other people are allowed to work off of him. That being said, is once if you can get through the opening, the later stuff really does pick up. You do see a lot more good character development. Although this also does suffer from protagonist power creep of Yeah, you don't really feel a threat to him, even in the whole first arc. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it's tough, right? Because it's trying to both at the same time be a series that the protagonist is unstoppable, but also uh, make it feel like he might not be. And in order to do that, they have to keep increasing the power scale of the enemies. Uh, pretty drastically, in fact. Um, but I, yeah. I think uh, it, it still did an okay job dealing with that up until this point. I think it just has the potential to eventually sink itself because you can only subvert the audience's expectations so many times with the kind of tricks that they're using. Yeah, it, it, it also does run to the thing of Mashal's whole bit is he's trying to prove his worth in a world where everyone has magic but him. The problem being, he could, anyone that badmouths him or looks down on him, he could take their house and then chuck it at them. In the span, it takes them to blink. Yeah, it's like, you know, he, he has kind of like a Superman quality to him. <laughs> where he's yeah, just got like all the, the powers. I was going to make. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you, you you walk into a room, you see the guy with the big S, the red cape on him, it's like, you're a weakling, what could you do? And the next thing you know, you're now on Mars. Because you've been knocked through the roof so hard. And because no one ever learns of that, line. it's like you see him be an absolute monster. You see people see him be an absolute monster. And it's like, oh, he don't got no magic. He a bitch. Uh, Only that they get smacked. <laughs> uh, one thing I will note is it does also touch upon the concept of like institutionalized discrimination. Although it doesn't explore that in great depth, it's interesting to see a series that is touching on that in today's market. Yep. Like I said, it's one of the other comparisons I will make is if you've watched Black Clover, you might see some comparisons there. I know a lot of more people have said this feels like, well, you know, Saitama in Hogwarts, but the, you know, magicless character in a magical world who prove, who's proving his worth is something we have seen a bunch. Though so the comedy aspect of it is something that has been a lot better. I think that uh, this is a solid. Oh, this is the number two for A. Does that sound good to you, Yuki? Uh, I would put it maybe at number three in A. I can definitely understand that. Because once again, long running showed it, so they yeah. have to build up their momentum. Uh, okay, this next series. I've watched, like, one episode of it, 
and I I couldn't come back to it. Uh, what was the name of this one again? Ojo ga kashurita ni ita ryu, or why Relena ended up at the Duke's mansion. Yeah. Uh, this one, just, there's been several series very similar to this recently. Uh, none of them have been good. Um, and so I just, I couldn't bring myself to spend the time to see if this a, one did any better. <laughs> they, they are a lot of mid-tier... Okay, so what this is, this is, happens to be another case of sub-genre of isekai. A female protagonist who gets sucked into her favorite Otama game and is now either a sub-character or the main villain. Or, or book or, or whatever it might be but within that general genre. Yeah. And now have to navigate this world with a bunch of generally hot guys with now I don't, I don't quite want to say basic personalities but um generic it's, personalities it's kind of become the new subgenre of uh generic uh reverse harem isekai yep yeah, and while we have seen this i funny enough this is a genre i've actually enjoyed over the over the last couple of years I, I mean, don't that's know fine. Why. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with it, but I'm just, I, I know my general taste and some reason this does it. I feel yeah, like I, I should bounce off of this, and I don't for some reason. Okay, interesting. Maybe it's the easy kind of trash goblin in me. It could be, yeah. I mean, I, I to be fair, I have been watching the other ones, but uh, with just so much competition in this series, and knowing that the others prove to be so av aggressively average, and that this one, like, also that they all felt very similar. Um, and that this one, from what I did watch, didn't look like it had any promise whatsoever to break that mold. Uh, I, I just couldn't find it in me to invest in it with so many other options. Yep, that uh, that was also the problem. I ran into this, I watched, I know, I didn't even watch, I, I caught the opening, I caught the trailer, I clipped through episode one. I believe was, was this Crunchyroll or was this? Uh... I do believe this one was Crunchyroll. Yeah, oh, yep, Crunchyroll. And it was just, oh yeah, it's another one of these. Yes. I feel like it also fell victim a little bit to the. Uh, there are too many things on my Crunchyroll watch list, and this has been pushed out to the back where I don't even see it anymore. Syndrome. Yeah, which we. Uh, another little side note, Crunchyroll is in the middle of eating the Funimation catalog at the moment, and their library is exploding. Yeah. And I'm like, High Dive, which I'm finding out, they don't have a simulcast, like, good viewing thing for some stupid reason. Uh, they do do simulcasts, um, but it's but only it's, for it's, certain shows. Yeah, it's there's just, for all the series coming out, it's it's been hard to be a country roll fan and keep up with actual new shows and not the oh yeah, this was a series we're just dumping on the country roll. Here it's brand new. Yeah, there's been a lot of noise in the usual signal that comes from the uh newly added section. Or or just updated or whatever they call it. Yeah, which has been problematic. This one, um, did not watch. Uh, yeah, I think uh, my my guess is that for people who are fans of the genre, this one will be okay. Uh, it would probably be like aggressively sea territory, um, but yeah. And looking and at the, it, it's got an average score of of seventy four percent, so uh, that falls right in line with that expectation. Yep. Okay then. Moving on, Baki no Kurko no Yabi Yatsu, the danger in my heart. Uh, did you end up watching any of this one? 
I caught I managed to power through the first and last episodes just because this one did look in, uh, incredibly interesting mm-hmm. compared to what's a lot of the other stuff going on. So, okay, if you if you did see the last episode as well, uh, then you might understand my main complaint about this was it really didn't end up living up to its potential. Uh, it, it felt like this was going to be a lot more unique than it was. And while this was a, a very nicely animated series that uh, had some good interplay between the characters, it ultimately ended up being uh, more of a generic romance than uh, the more unique show that it promised to be early on. Yeah, from the feels, uh, the feel I got from the beginning and the end, this went set stood up to be a lot more heavy on. Hey, this like like all their series we've seen, this ch- uh, kid, especially in those teenage years, who is awkward, has some weird stuff going on, and has adapted to his life situation in unusual and odd ways. Does not know quite how to deal with actually developing a romance and them trying to grow as a per uh you know a awkward teenager into the beginning of a functional adult or dysfunctional adult i think even more than that like it the 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 feeling that i got from the early episodes was that there might be some exploration of something deeper in this uh with you know a character that has maybe been uh, wounded or traumatized or that may be struggling with some mental illness and they pretty much just chalked all of that up to it being like teenaged angst and things like that rather than moving forward with that exploration um so for me you know i ended up a little disappointed that it, it didn't live up to that potential um it was still probably a, a high C, low B series to me, but it, it could have been so much more. Yeah, that is that is a lot of the feel I got from this. It's, you could have explored a little bit more, but you, tr- played it, you played it a little safer than you probably needed to it towards the end. You didn't go into what can make somebody like this a little more off a little I don't, know, I don't want to say a little edgier but you know you, you you know you develop weird stuff for specific reasons and seeing those reasons come out it's a, especially in your teenage years is incredibly interesting yeah and, and i think um the show unintentionally uh ends up giving this message that like Falling in love with someone is kind of this magical uh, treatment for your mental problems. Um, And that is the opposite of how that works in the real world. (laughs) Yes, yes, very much. Your mental problems will not be fixed by someone else. You need to look at your mental problems and then get somebody that can either... I I don't want to get romantic advice. I'm I'm yeah, really yeah. I'm bad at that. Being, I'm, I'm not a romantic I, I get, person. I get where slightest. you're going with that, right? Uh, uh, let, let's yeah. say instead that a healthy relationship is founded on being able to either be in a comfortable place yourself, and you know have a, a strong personal um, uh, love for yourself before you try to share that with another person. Or with uh, being able to find a partner who is compatible because they complete those pieces of yourself that you are missing, and vice versa. Yeah. That's probably a lot better way than where my my, my tongue-tiedness was going on that one. I felt like that's where you were trying to go with it. (laughs) Yeah, no, thank you. Once again, the beauties of a (laughs) (laughs) co-host. Uh, okay, um, that's, which, once again, it's, the fact that they at least do acknowledge, acknowledge edgy teenagerness, I do appreciate that, and not just, oh, I'm the protagonist, I'm the 
you know, character I don't quite understand love, and at least it was, oh, love, maybe I should do this, or weird about that. It's, I, I at least did appreciate that. Yeah, it there just, was at least a little depth more. to the characters, and, you know, it, 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 it was still an okay ride, right? It, it just, it yeah. could have been more. Yeah. I, I, it, it feels like it should be in a B, but the fact that it, it almost hit that A tier and missed the mark or didn't try hard enough almost makes me want to drop it back down to C, but... Yeah, I, I, I feel like... A, a mid B. Yeah, I, I feel like it, if I'm being objective, it still deserves to be a B. I just feel a little betrayed by the series. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Although I, I, I did, I will manage the, the sister at the end looking at the, the main love interest and like, you're a middle schooler? <laughs> Which is that. It's like, Japan, like, middle schoolers are not that, okay, generally are not that sad. Yeah, Especially well, to be country. fair, the character is a model, so, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're definitely supposed to be several cuts above average. Um, that said, uh, the average score on this one was 81%, so it sounds like most agree that it should be probably somewhere in kind of the low B territory. Um, and I would actually put this one a little bit below the Yuri show, personally. Um... It just, the, that one did a better job exploring its concepts than this one did. Okay, I can, I'll modify that, no problem on that one. But, um, okay then, getting on. Oh, here's a mouthful for Titsi Kurzo no I, Isekai Bankuro Jikoto wa Shardo Kagami no Shito. The aristocrats' otherworldly adventure serving God who go too far. Yeah. Uh, did you watch any of this one? I watched the first three episodes, then came back for the final episode to see if there was any kind of plot twist that wasn't obnoxiously that wasn't obnoxiously obvious. And uh, there was I, not. I, yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely fair. Um. This show was exactly what you expected it to be, you know, start to finish. Um, Boiler plate isekai. Yeah, it, it, aggressively low C tier. Like, um, it just... The, the animation wasn't terrible, but the character designs weren't amazing either. Um, it just, you can't just make them silver-haired and call them original anymore. Yeah, it just is what it is. Um, it, there's nothing special about the show. Uh, it, you know, like, maybe if you're part of the audience that really likes to see a younger male protagonist attracting an older harem, that might bump it up for older, you. Like, they, they were, like, the two main girls, like, were, like, 11 and 12, I, I think. I don't know. Anime ages are weird, still. So. Yeah. Um, well, it's not really so much the two main girls, but he does uh, attract kind of a, an orbiting harem of some additional side characters, uh, including uh, an elf that is a uh, thousand years old or something like that, who is the princess of a neighboring like, subservient kingdom or something, who is also the captain of the guards. It, it's just that kind of show. It's, well, at least she's not a lolly. Like, if you want to do the, uh, the ancient elf, please, no, don't this, a this lolly, is definitely please. A, uh, this is definitely a Shoda genre show, not a lolly genre show. Which doesn't make it too much better. But... No, <laughs> but that is what it is. Either you like that or you don't. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, it's other than you know, that t particular tag, it's this is as paint by numbers of an isekai story as I can imagine. Specifically, the, the only... like super overpowered isekai genre, the kind that has no real development going on in it. 
Yep, its biggest joke is the main character is obnoxiously powerful. And everybody is shocked by him accidentally doing stuff because, oh yeah, no, I'll just go fix this really quick over here. But at the same time, it also ends up taking on that like 90s sitcom show of like, always Fred, like. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I can, I can definitely feel that. Um, I, I, I don't want to throw us in D because while it is basic boilerplate on in on original, it does what it does fairly well. It doesn't try to go over the top. But by that point, it doesn't fall below. Yeah, I, I'd say it's a very low end of C, like probably lower than Konosuba. Yeah, it, it's if just Pixel watches this. He he will eat me alive if I put too much above that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's there's nothing to really redeem it, but it's not that it's actually a bad show. It just doesn't stand out. The model of mid tier. If it came out 12 years ago, it could have been unique. <laughs> and I think you fail to realize how long Isekai has been around at this point. That might yeah, have been but I mean, I mean at that time, it might have still been uh, fresh in the sense of, like, the OP Isekai subgenre hadn't really fully emerged. Yep, and if anybody's wondering, this is a solid 6 on network, so... They all pretty much agree. It's mid tier. Yeah, it's very mid -tier. lower mid tier. <laughs> okay, then moving on to our next little isekai genre. Let's see here. Oh, another long one. I this was a light novel. This was a light novel. I could tell by the title. Isekai da cheat skill wa tini shata or wa. Genjutsu Saka wa mo musho shiri level up wa jisi wo kati. Um, okay. Or future notes agent. Maybe I should do the Japanese reading. <laughs> the light are so bad. It's hilarious. I That's hope. true. I mean, there there is a there is an aspect of uh, comedy to it. I'll give you that. Okay, but English on that. I got a cheat skill on another world that became unrivaled in the real world, too. And so, boilerplate. Exactly what it sounds twist. like. <laughs> yeah, this, this was a probably online light novel that got an adaptation because they needed more shows this season. For some reason. Um, oh, dear God, yes. I will say this is one of those shows where a lot of the still shots, uh, if you look at them, look very nicely rendered. Except the scenes where the CG is obvious. On those, even the stills aren't going to look great. Um, which is a fair number of them. Uh, probably close to 50 or 60% of the show has at least some CG element that's pretty outstanding. Um... Not not criminally so in a lot of cases, uh, but noticeable. Um, for that matter, like the, the main character, particularly during the action scenes, almost always transitions to being 3D CG, uh, which can feel a little bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it doesn't the biggest... do the kind of job with it that something like Demon Slayer does. Yeah, the biggest note to this, this is part of a new Ishikai uh, subgenre popping up where protagonists can jump between the fantasy world or the Ishikai world and the real world and carry over all the buffs that entails. Yeah, we saw this last season with um, the, I can't remember the name of it now already, but the, there was the girl who opens the shop in the alternate world and, uh, you know, hires like a, a uh, military um, mercenary contractor to come and help them out in the fantasy world and everything. Um, it, it weird how this subgenre has been evolving, uh, but I don't think this is the time and place to go into that. Uh, that might be its own discussion at some point if we feel like it. 
Um, or a show that actually stands out or does an interesting premise with it, other than, oh, I went from being the fat slob to muscle. Uh, well, I, I can actually name one that does a, a good job with it. Um, but it, it's like something that this genre kind of evolved from, not really a, a solid part of this genre. Um, and that would be uh, like Restaurant to Another World. Oh, yep, that's um, another interesting one. But yeah, this is this is a uh, boilerplate uh, isekai uh, fantasy fulfillment. But oh, hey, I get to carry it over to back to the real world and show off against all my bullies. I, I would say that this is um, fantasy wish fulfillment taken to an almost comical extreme. Because it, it doesn't just touch on, like, one element of wish fulfillment the way that they often do. It's like everything in this person's life suddenly becomes flawless. And they're, they're just, like, spoiled for choice and don't even know what to do with any of it. Yeah, that's... which... If it, if it went a little further, if it had just gone a little further, it would have been comical enough. I probably would have enjoyed it better. But it plays, it tries to play it almost straight. Yeah. Or it tries to play it straight and, fa and fails at that slightly. It doesn't come off as good, I would say. Yeah, it, they should have, if they had played it a little bit straighter or a, a lot looser, it still could have been okay. But as it stands, it's just um, very, very average. Like, if you're not a fan of the genre, skip this entirely for sure. I want to throw this down in D next to Second Time Reincarnation Isekai. I would say it's slightly better than that one, but definitely like D tier, uh, low, uh, low C tier, uh, something like that. Because I, I like this better than I don't. I didn't like this as much as Aristocrat. Aristocrat, like I said, was basic but solid. This At least tried Aristocrat to be more was cute. <laughs> yeah, this tries to do something, but then falls back on its old tropes, which makes it feel worse. The worst in that it it tries to be every trope, but not in a subversive way. Yeah. Okay, I think that's good on that one. Let's. Yeah. Oh, hey, we have the first feel good. Kagawashi so, uh, Crisis, or Too Cute Crisis for the dub. All right. Uh, what? No, that's not the next one on this. Oh, wait, no, I. No, it's that isn't fun. the next one. Why don't I Welcome have that in the right spot? I might have failed to load this one up. Okay, I, I'll find it for you. Just a second. Um, so we have our first slip of the cranks. Neat. <laughs> uh, oh, well, first Megami no Cafe Terrace. Or uh, the uh, Goddesses of the Terrace Cafe, I believe it was. Um, oh, the, it's getting a second season, so there's that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is, this is probably one of the only, like, straight, etchy, harem anime this season, um, which is usually a very saturated genre, uh, but I have to give it a certain amount of points because it's the only one this time. <laughs> yes, it's, this was a... This might have been a high dive one, so I know I I missed this one completely. Uh, Not just no, even on this, this list, this but this was unrelated. also Crunchyroll. Ah, uh, so lost the Crunchyroll deluge. Yeah. Uh, so what I would say about this one is, uh, its biggest crime is that it's uh, the concept and the character designs are very quintessential quintuplets. But the problem with that is, in quintessential quintuplets, they are quintuplets. They are supposed to look identical. In this show, 
all of the characters have same face and same body with just, like, different hairstyles. Like, if you took away their hair and stood them next to each other, you would not be able to tell any of these characters apart. Yeah, um, I'm blowing up that thumbnail and picture it's... Yeah, they even have similar eye color most of the time, too. Like this. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing to, uh, you know, make their, uh, make their... I nothing mean, stands their, out. Well, not just that nothing stands out, but, um... Differentiate uh, the, each other? The, 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 I'm trying to remember the word for, like, the profile or the, the shadow that they cast, the, um... I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on that. Um... Uh, yeah, so, uh, any, anyway, the, the, we'll, we'll just say that the character design on this, uh, for a show that's supposed to be about, like, getting you attracted to these characters in very much the sexual sense, um, does a very poor job of appealing to a broad category of body interests, um, and indeed is, you know, that's that's really a failing in and of itself, also because there's no differentiation between these characters to make you feel like there should be any reason for there to really be more than one or two characters. Are they all the same type of dairy? No, there are a little bit of differences there, but it's so inconsequential that... <sighs> It's it's kind of pointless. Like they easily could have rolled all of them again in, into like two characters, and it, it would have done the job. Um, they just uh, like okay, well this one is gonna be the the sporty muscle head one, okay? But you could have had her be the sporty muscle head one who was also the music one, and there was no reason that you couldn't do that. Yeah. Anyway, uh. This is, again, the only fan service show that's like a straight fan service etchy show this season. Uh, the characters are okay. There are some definitely undisguised fetishes involved. Um, if, the director's if, mildly disguised fetish. Not even. Uh, just blatant fetish. Uh, uh. Like, it literally called out by the other characters, scent kink. <laughs> There's an odd one you don't see too often. It shows up here and there, but yeah, it, it's definitely a, a little more niche. Um, so, I have a hard time, uh, you know, recommending this one at all, even though it's the only etchy series this season. Like, in any other season, this would be... Don't bother watching it because there's better options. Uh, but only because there aren't this season, I'm still gonna go oh, ahead and recommend that it's like a C tier or something. There are there are a couple highly itchy anime, but um, they're in their own genre. Um, yeah, not, not in this genre of it. Yeah. But you say C, or you, where do you think this in C then? Uh, I, I would put it maybe... Well, okay, looking at, at what else we have in the C tier, probably at the top of C tier. Um, if only because it's probably going to have a much broader appeal than the sister show. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is that one right underneath that. Eat. Okay, now I've got my list back in order. Um, all right. Yamada kun to level 999 no koi wo suryu. Or my love story with Yamada kun at level 999. I am assuming you probably didn't watch this one being a romance. Nope. I did not. Okay. Um, so. Pretty good animation in this one, um, like, uh, very nice stills quality, uh, you're not gonna see a whole ton of character movement in most of the scenes, so, you know, don't, don't go in expecting there to be, like, 
uh, any really nice Sakuga. Um, but overall, the, the quality that you see in virtually every scene is a little bit above average. Um, that said, uh, I mean, I give it extra points for bias because, hey, it's a gamer relationship, and it does an okay job of, of being that. Like, um, it, it doesn't try to, try to kind of force it the way that I've seen some other shows try to. Uh, it just makes it kind of a casual element of their lives, even though one of them is actually a pro gamer. Um, so... I I think this is a, a pretty decent show. Um, it, it's not groundbreaking or anything, but I, I would give it probably in the B tier. Um, I, I would say it's probably above the last one in B tier, but that's about it. Okay. I, I love how B tier is just turning into the romance tier at this point. <laughs> Well, we do have a, you know, a, a, a fantasy and a, a drama in there, too. Yeah, but... Okay. The lower end of B tier, though, yeah, it's definitely a solid romance genre block. Okay, okay this, this is the one rocking. that you thought the last one was. <laughs> yep. Kamigawa Crisis or Too Cute Crisis. Uh, did you end up watching any of this? I think this one was actually High Dive. Yeah, no, I I honestly uh, forgot this one was a show I should have caught up on. That's fair. Um, I'm not sure it was worth your time to catch up on, to be fair. Um, it wasn't completely terrible. It, it tried to do something at least that I haven't seen other shows do a whole lot of. Uh, it had a little bit of that, like... 90s comedy anime feel to it where uh you know you would see like lum or something like that um where there there would be like you know a a bizarre uh out of this world situation in many cases literally uh coming up that uh is the source of the comedy um Especially juxtaposed against, like, a, something in normal everyday life. Uh, I, I wasn't able to finish this series. Um, it's not that I felt that it shouldn't be finished, necessarily. Uh, but again, with the, the sheer amount of other options, this one just wasn't interesting enough for me to keep going. Yep. For a little bit of a, a premise on this one, since this isn't just easily jumped into the isekai genre, oh, yes. aliens come to invade to wipe out the planet, but find cat pictures are awesome. Well, more to the point, they discover the existence of animals in general, uh, and, and that Earth's animals, uh, to them, are so cute that it can be literally deadly. Oh, that's... So, yeah, this is a heavy gag, and if the premise doesn't catch you or make you laugh, it kind of falls... Not it... It's a better example of Otaku Elf. Uh, the premise is in episode one, and that's where the, the jokes will be from. And if you can't latch onto that, or if you don't find them amusing, this will not be a series you enjoy. Yeah, also... On the other uh... hand... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I also wanted to note that while the series is very much about cute animals, they didn't really have the budget to make any of the animals particularly cute. Um, they're not, they're not nightmarish or anything like that, but they're definitely not selling the cuteness that the characters are reacting to. Yeah. Uh, from the like I said, the little bit I had caught up on after the mid, like looking into it after our mid-season review, this felt like an incredibly mid-show whose gag would wear through it then after a while. Yeah, and it hadn't so, quite I, worn thin on me when I dropped it, but 
I still felt like it had the potential to. All right, so where are we dropping this? I'm, I, I feel C tier is a good place for it, middle of C tier. Um, I would say it's below Konosuba. Um, okay, I could, I yeah. could definitely see that. Especially if Konosuba also being a comedy series that kind of was hampered by a similar problem, but maybe still uh, executed a little better by having a little bit more to it than just that central joke. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we have another one, which I was able to find the listing for this one, so if you could get the name out for me, please. Oh, sure. Um... So this is uh, Tengoku Daimakyo, or, uh, oh, what was the, it's, the English name was Heaven something, I can't, like, it doesn't translate directly. Uh, so this, the, the production on this one, or the release on this one, is a little bit odd. While most anime nowadays can be filed under Crunchyroll, or high dive with the occasional Netflix. Here's a whole season popping up every so often. Oh yeah, it, we might have to, have to work those into something. Um, this was a Hulu or Disney Plus release for everyone not in the U.S. I guess. Correct. And it was much. hard to find because of its odd platform. Or yeah, hard I, to I remember, literally I because say. it's marked as being a Disney Plus release, had a difficult time tracking down where I could even watch this one. Uh, it was only through research that I even discovered that it was on Hulu instead of Disney Plus, and uh, that on its own meant that I didn't really get around to watching this one, just because that meant I had to load up a completely different platform that I pretty much never use for anime just to watch that show. This is a this is on a platform both of us do have, but both of us uh is it why I have that that platform. Granted, the reason I have that platform is not because I want to watch it personally, but other people I know want to watch that platform. Uh <laughs> but this is if this wouldn't have been on Hulu, if this wouldn't have been Disney Plus. I do see a lot of promise in this one, but it was. And, yeah. it, and we can't, all right, I can't rate, this is rating it off of what it is, not what it could have been or what it should have been. So, and I will say, you know, it was production IG. Uh, the animation from what I saw in the episode I did watch was pretty solid. They do have pretty decent animation chops. Um, it was giving off kind of like promised Neverland vibes meets like, uh... That was Neverland season one. The only season. <laughs> um, geez, I can't even remember. What what was the name of that anime that Zero Two is from? The, um... Darling in the Franks? Yeah, Darling in the Franks. It, it had a little bit of that kind of vibe to it too, in terms of like the plot. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, I, like, I, I want to watch this one at some point. I just couldn't get into the platform on a regular basis to see that new episodes were out and stuff. So, uh, after I watched episode one, it just sat there and it'll probably get binged eventually, question mark. Yep, so this, this one's going to be a solid did not watch. Not because of the show, not because of the production quality, not because of the story, but because of the streaming app. Yep. Uh, it did okay, get uh, 81%, by the way. Um, so, you know, I, I think uh, that's pretty in line with where I was expecting it to sit. Uh, you're probably looking at, like, a, a at least a solid B tier, um, if you do give this one a shot. Yep. Okay, the next one, the series I consider the biggest disappointment from my initial hopes, The Marginal Service. <laughs> I never did get around to watching this one, so this one's all yours. 
Okay, so the general premise of this show, it not vlogging to standard isekai format, is aliens have invaded the Earth. And basically what most people, I think, in the U.S. would be more familiar with as cryptid, such as, you know, Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, you know, Yetis, Chupacabra, all that, come out and fight them. I imagine they called them Yumas in the uh, series. Outlanders. Outlanders? Okay, so they... Uh, all right, they came up with a series-specific uh, word for it then. Yep. This show is... Which, that concept by itself is very interesting. But the initial concept we go off of is, well, now the world governments have to uh, acknowledge that not only aliens exist and are an existential threat, but mythical creatures live all around us, have lived all around us, and are still living all around us. And that's kind of a problem. That needs to be regulated. And uh, we follow the Marginal Service, a pseudo-UN police force designed to police these outlanders who are also incredibly powerful and... Um, I don't want to say invulnerable to standard weapons, but highly resistant. Fairly impervious. Yeah, pretty much. The what's also God, such a good premise, and they even decided to play it up as a power working class Power Rangers. So much going on. The problem being, our main character, a loose cannon cop with a chip on his shoulder who's just lost his partner, shoved into this crazy world. And the partner they put him up with is the most insufferable jerk I have ever witnessed in a goddamn anime. <laughs> oh my... Well, his character type is, fuck you, stop talking to me, why don't you have your suit and gun? Oh, because I didn't tell you? Well, fuck you. If if you ever had a job where you you come onto the thing and you're told I'll remember your name in a, if you last a month from the guy training you, this is what that felt like, and this is one of the characters we have to love, we have to enjoy, we have to get behind, and with so I I I, I watched straight up to episode five, then came back for the ending. There was a lot they did in the ending that felt really good. The character was still an asshole. <laughs> and um, it's not the, you know, the, the loose candid cop who lost his partner. He's actually the guy who gets treated by this asshole. It's just... I, I, I haven't watched a show who I, that I want to like so much, but I just hate... Because of the characters in it. <laughs> and I, I don't know how to classify that. Because the animation is done good. The jokes are done good. I like the majority of the characters. A little bit generic here and there, but there's a lot to love. I guess if you can get over the asshole of the show, it's good. But... Uh, I will I, note that it looks like the audiences agree with you, though. This one is sitting at a 51%. Yeah, I'm seeing a 5 on most of my list, so... I, I'm, I, I gotta throw it in D. I gotta... I'm putting, it, I'm putting it at the bottom of D. You don't get a drop because there is... Hold on, I gotta sneeze. No, I don't. <laughs> Oh, that's awful when that happens. Yeah, it's 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 bugging me. It's bugging me. Well, you didn't like actually complete the series. series, though. You didn't actually complete the series, though, so I think that qualifies it for the dropped category. You can put it above the other yeah. show. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, put the I'll put it at the bottom of the dropped category. Because really? It's that bad, huh? It's... I... 
you know, I can understand a lot more for people now that I've talked to, like, oh, there's just this one little hiccup in the show that just ruins the entire experience for me. Okay. This show. Hmm. I want to love it. I want to like it, but I just cannot get over that um that one fault, that major fault. Yeah, it just made it so aggressively bad for you that even something that was as much of a dumpster fire as that other series still pulled ahead because at least it wasn't an actively painful experience. <laughs> Not even painful. It's it's infuriating. It's I watched the show and it actively made me angry. <laughs> I generally don't have that experience of shows. But, but it did elicit an emotional response, which means it's art. <laughs> if I didn't have a projector, I might have thrown something through my screen. <laughs> that being said, I, I need to stop throwing stuff at my wall. Um Okay, let's let's get on to probably. Oh, let's see. It's what else do we have on this list? Um, no, I I think we might argue with the worst show this season. Quite possibly, uh, the Kizuna Eye thing, uh, definitely a hard dropped for me. Uh, episode one was actively bad, um, and from what I hear, it ended up being even worse later with the NFTs and stuff. Yeah, episode one horrible. Episode I oh, was it like two or three, I think. I don't. I honestly, I don't even know. Tries to sell you NFTs. It's like, you know what? You know what? You get to go. You get to be the below marginal service. The show that pissed yeah. me off at least didn't try to endorse scamming me. So, for perspective, I wanted very much as someone who is both an anime fan and an actual member of the VTuber community hey to be able to watch this show and I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to get any more of endorsement, we are as target audience for this show as you could possibly get, probably. And we, we still it. actively hated it. <laughs> As an idol anime, it failed to wow. As a VTubing anime, it it just hey, we're VTubers. What's that mean? Uh, we're VTubers though. And then it beat you scams. <laughs> It's, uh, it's log it's, on to our malware VTubing site. <laughs> oh my God! Like, how do you fundamentally? I don't. Know, it's like I can have words about marginal service. I can. I can have words about a lot of these mid, low t. It's like this one. It's it's fundamentally bad on almost even on a production level. It just does it look good most of the time? Like, bird, oh, people who aren't aware, VTubers generally don't look exactly like their models. This isn't, I don't have big wolf ears on my head. My hair is not this blue. It, although it is probably that long, but, uh, I mean, there are some exceptions. I I've definitely seen some folks uh, who look very, very similar to their character models. But it, Which, it, they're the minority, I think it's fair to say. Yep, and the fact that anytime any of the characters of the show switch from their real life person to their VTubing model, I think they change outfits most of the time. And that's about the difference. Yeah, and it, it seems like the big draw is these like choreographed. CGI dance sequences that look like they're probably made in, um, whatever that Hatsune Miku dance creator thing is. Um, Vocaloid? Uh, well, not, not the Vocaloid studio thing, but, like, 
uh, the one that's specifically for dances, uh, MMD. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, anyway, uh, it just, I, it very much not impressed, like, and, I, I, like, I, I, as someone who understands the tech and everything, um, if this was someone who was doing all this on their own as, like, a VTubing enterprise, I would say it would be a very impressive effort, but for something that's coming out of an actual animation production studio, I feel betrayed that this is supposed to be the attraction point of the series. And the fact that it's supposed to be high-end production VTubers at an academy for this. In and the future, like... no less. <laughs> yes, where 400 series graphics cards are considered to be power underpowered. And it's... Th this... I, I think reason it feels so bad is you can feel the cash grab inside of this anime above any of these shows any of the productions that are just dumped out to fill a time slot to fill a niche to sell merch this is the most blatant buy our product buy my book well no that's we get we're gonna be go against that it's buy the nft yeah. Buy our JPEG. <laughs> Sorry, the, the reference I made was a very deep cut and not really appropriate to this audience. <laughs> it sounds like, okay, uh, it's going to bug me if you don't tell me. Oh, it's, uh, uh, there is a series that used to air on Comedy Central called The Critic. Um, oh, yep. Yep, yeah, no, and, and there was an episode where uh, they made reference to the fact that he at one point had made a, like, cardboard standee that would say that over and over again, and it had to be pulled out of stores because it kept driving shopkeepers insane and making them, like, kill themselves <laughs> uh, and alive themselves. Yep, no, nope. <laughs> yep, nope, I, the, the minute you said critic, I actually knew what the reference was at that point. Okay. <laughs> yep. I watch a lot of weird stuff. Welcome Who to guess by this Kazi list. Um, okay, let's. I watched that one with the red-haired girl. Oh. Another is a guy. Yep. Hi there. Yeah, some of these were pretty good. Now moving on to a. God, that sneeze is just lingering. Welcome, quickly. Arguably. Yep. Uh, okay, hopefully, hit the mute button quick enough. Okay, yep. Yeah, ah, that did. sneeze finally okay. came out. <laughs> okay, arguably, well, now going from the bottom. 12 VPs, if nothing but. To what might have been the best one Dead Mound Death Play. Ah, so unfortunately for me, this falls into that category of did not complete because I was watching it with someone else. Uh, a lot of the best shows of the season kind of fell into that category for me. I'm hoping to binge them and, and finish them up soon, but didn't get to complete it. Um, definitely very interesting, though. Um, I'll kind of let you take it, because I think you've actually completed the series, right? Oh, you know, yeah. I, did I, not watch LMAO. I um, would put this in the uh, one of the top shows. So this is a reverse isekai, a weirdly underutilized genre. Only a couple big series that come out from this one. Not even like a lot of garbage, but you basically a uh, general premise is you have the death god, the you know the dark necromantic lord of the fantasy world, who gets reincarnated in our world, and it kind of goes from hey this was a demon lord like a uh, very powerful dark lord who wants to live a peaceful life who just wants to be left alone and you get to see him not only navigate our world start but you know kind of how he can navigate our world with his powers and from the opening premise it is very interesting on that end from Little side note, this is also from the writer of Durara and Bakino. So, very, very solid character work on everything from beginning to end. The, the biggest answer I will say is 
the CGI skeletons. Those don't get any better. <laughs> Fortunately, though, they're not aggressively terrible. Um, they they do a, a, an okay job of compositing them into most of the scenes, too. Uh, but yeah, they, they are certainly a noticeable CGI, uh, e even if they're not the most painful to look at. Yeah. The one of the biggest twists, which if you've seen his, this uh, writer's other work, he generally does like to put those in there, is you see other elements of the world have a fantasy element themselves and then have to react to a new big fish in small pond scenario. A you know interesting uh, genre of by just existing, this character changes the world around him. Yeah, For me, it was a trash season. The best ones were B-tier tops. I see. Yep. Or Making the hard The best ones were B-tier? <laughs> yep. If, if you had it, tried a few of these. from a hack? Oh, she don't know clothes from a hack? Okay, I can... That's it. This one... I, I don't want to spoil too much, but... We will be getting a... I, if it's a core, I think it's core two this fall. But I gotta throw this one up in the S. Oh, that high, huh? Uh, core uh, uh What? All I can say to that because we already it's a reviewed time it. etc. Esque so predictable. Is that uh for Oshinoko to to actually see our opinion on it? You might want to check out the vod. Um, it's up there in S for a very specific reason. Oh, he's kind of regretted. Yeah, I, I can, I can definitely understand that. But because I don't know. Um, Yuki, did you have any other personal takes from what the bit you saw on this one? Like I said, it's because yes, well, I did I have a lot. That. I don't want to spoil too much more from the later stuff. Um, uh, just to address Quirklicious's question real quick, uh, I won't go into any details, but it's it's there. Um, because of the the way that we grade and scale things. And the fact that it did something uh, very specific that nothing else has done before. Anyway, um, sorry, you wanted me to, to take the next show? Well, I, I, I was asking if you had any thoughts yourself on um, Dead Mount oh. Death Play. Uh, yeah, so Dead Mount Death Play, um, I, I think. I mean, it. I, I thought it had potential to be S, it's just I didn't finish it, so I couldn't really tell if it deserved that for sure or not. Because um, it, it still had the potential to, like, you know, tailspin down into a dive and, and crash horribly. Uh, but um, it, if it kept up the kind of quality that I was seeing, then uh, I felt like it was definitely heading for, like, a high A, maybe low S. Kind of 47 tier. plus. Welcome to Yuki yeah. Kazi Gaming. I, I would honestly say once it got a little bit more of its world building done and started opening up other uh, story arcs and plots that were already in, kind of happening in this world, that its plot managed to pick up several scales. The fact that the main character just wasn't an OP monster. While Exposing possibly still the, the strongest person in the world, is, is there are definitely a lot of people who have can on my book. be a threat to him, especially if they catch him unaware. I... Oh, and uh, another question. Sorry, I couldn't respond to that because uh, my my text to speech was drowning you out for a second there. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I can understand. I see quirks. Um. Uh, comment? Yeah, comment on that. I can definitely understand where you're coming from that on that one, Quirk, too. It's... Yeah. It's, it's a bit how I they did some stuff that. Adventure or quest journey of the hero histories. I mean, that's fair to have that as your scale. It asterisk. Um, but that, that was not the, the way that we graded it. Uh, very specifically... Uh, my criteria typically for something being in S tier is specifically it having an impact, uh, a lasting impact that changes the industry as a whole, or uh, that has shown a uh, a level of mastery that is going to make it 
a kind of all-time classic or uh, something that people are going to be, you know, talking about for years to come. Uh, so, I mean, because... No, it, that it, anime it, was smoke. But, uh, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that it did that. The reason that it's up there is like specifically... Like, usually Sony does. Because the first episode was then released as a theater release. Um, so... It didn't have anything to do with the quality of the On series the or the industry. writing. The reason that it's up there is it's specifically because the uh, show did something that had never been done before, which was being uh, aired as the first episode as a theater release, which is a paradigm shift for the industry, potentially. Yep, yeah, which that by itself will... At least be remembered or pick mentioned idols, for a while. Pick influencer and pick pretty drawings, but not much change. TB. Okay, but um. But none of that's yeah, what yeah, we're but, talking about here. So anyway, maybe we're gonna move on. Yeah, I don't agree. Some terror. Um. Being long so we'll be on to our next show. Chidoa wa shirana. For big projects in the future. And go say ga. You. Kuru, my clueless first friend. Seven B V L it. gaming snappy. Yeah, uh, uh, this being another romance, I'm guessing you didn't really go for this one. This looks like elementary. This was a romance. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> it was a, a romance in the elementary schooler sense, but it was still a romance. Okay. Yeah. No. This was a, um, did not watch for me. This is... And a Crunchyroll one, so yeah, this is, I just completely missed this one. This is yep. the Crunchyroll, uh, deluge. Yeah, so, um, I would say, you know, there's... I had some, some hopes that this one might, uh, take a more unique turn, but it didn't. Um was relatively cute if you like uh you know things that kind of explore that side of like the childish innocent innocence of like the first Octel crush Pro. or something like that welcome but, to yukikazu gaming uh, it, it was probably mid c somewhere um i guess i guess it's uh probably above the uh other show that we have there next to Konosuba, but um probably not really any higher than that. Not too much else you can really say about this one. Yeah. Uh nothing else I really want to say about it. Like, um they they just kinda utterly failed to really develop the characters any more than them having a, you know, a crush. And that shouldn't really be the defining aspect of the characters in a romance. Um, and the I mean... characters have a romance. He, some, of the, some of the background characters were so one-note that, like, that guy in the green shirt you see, literally the only thing that you know about that character by the end of the series, even though he's one of the main supporting cast members, is that he really likes tank tops. It's like, if the I Like Shorts kid from Pokemon were a main supporting character in an anime. Okay, then. Neat. Oh, sorry, my bad. It, it's not the green uh, shirt kid, it's the red shirt kid. <laughs> okay, then, yeah. Bland, it, it's obviously because you decided to proceed, it's just solidly mid tier. Yeah, um, like. Honestly, if we had a better showing of the mid-tier shows, it might not even rank that high in the mid-tier. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. 
Okay, then, moving on. World Die Star, or the English, Stella of the Theater World Die Star. Uh, this was a solid did not watch for me. What even in the 21st century, the world experiencing musical theater boom, top performers known as Die Stars, fill the audience with their marvelous singing and acting. Among them, the greatest performers are given the title of World Die Star. Okay, so this is a theater kid, not idol anime show. But also totally an idol anime show. Yeah. Spy I'm fun. seeing at least a good rating on this, but Welcome once again... Welcome to Yukikaze Gaming Snappy. The Rayana one was okay. Uh, this was a did not watch from me either. I'm oh, seeing well. it at like 69%, 71%. But um, I feel like the the interest group for this one is very specific. Yeah, it could be. I, once again, this is a did not watch. I'll, I'll throw it in the number two slot. Because out of all of these, this looks like one of the better ones. Just not in a genre either of us enjoyed. Ooh, sneezes are picking up on me now. Okay, let's see here. And then we have... Is this the one? Yep, yeah, okay. Tusinochu, Great Mission. Or Run for the Money, The Great Mission. Which... Did you happen to catch this one, Yuki? I did not. Not at all. Um... Honestly, this one looked really bad to me, just out the gate. <laughs> what was this even on? Toy... Oh, th this wasn't licensed. <laughs> that might be part of why neither of us caught it, too, but... I mean, yeah, also, right, right, it just didn't him. look interesting. <laughs> oh, yes. So... Oh, what was the, um, this is part of the, those money game shows of, hey, participate on this show to win a ton of cash, or you might die, or participate to gain your freedom, or you might die, but Shonen-esque? Yeah, I don't know, like, everything about that screen grab that they used, I mean, okay, yeah, first off, I feel like a large portion of this poster that they made is basically a, a bunch of composited screen grabs together. And secondly, nothing about that gets my interest at all. And I don't feel like it should, because, you know, you've got a bunch of really generic looking bad guys in the background there who don't even feel proportionally correct. <laughs> Um, I think they were supposed to be cyborgs or something, or robots. I, they, why they why, were, why they would were they need to be? <laughs> like, I, I looked into this for a bit, because the premise did sound interesting. I do happen to enjoy the death game genre most of the time, but... Yeah, I, I will point out that we really didn't have any other death games this season that I can think of, so there's that for it, I guess. Um, but it's on this the looks other like hand, a... the main character is Sawyer Tam Sawyer Tamora or Tom Sawyer. So <laughs> honestly, if you've ever seen Dinosaur King, he kind of reminded me. Like I looked at that, it's like is that the main character from that series? Yeah, it has a very like Beyblade kind of feel to it. Um, in a lot of respects, only maybe even lower budget. Yeah, which is uh, not a good thing. No, no, it's not. But, no, a solid do not watch. And, ooh, we are nearing the end here. We have two left, and one of those is, uh, let me talk about, but before we get to the um, bad CGI elephant in the room, we have Rokido no Ana Tachi. Or Rokido's Bad Girls. Yes. Uh, I, I remember you were talking about this one back in Season 1, but I don't know if you ever ended up catching much of it. 
I watched episode one. Fair. I I remember we did our mid season of this one, and yeah. it's while it is a stylized show, it's an ugly stylized show that doesn't like to do anything or have a reason to be ugly. Yeah. Um, I stopped watching it around our mid season review because I, I just couldn't justify giving it any more of my time. Um, and it, even as like background noise it wasn't very entertaining um I, I, this one goes pretty hard into the dropped category for me yeah i i won't argue that the biggest thing i said it's while there was some interesting concepts it's part of that well the main character has a love charm that attracts girls to him yeah i i, uh, I would say it's maybe on the high end of dropped because it's not super aggressively unwatchable it's just not good probably at the top uh, there yeah it's like the it, unlike the rest of these shows it didn't make me angry confused or yeah, no it, say everything else on there made me angry or confused um yeah <laughs> it was just not not enough to really keep my interest and the more you thought about the premise the Oh, this 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 is good. This actually this feels isn't... kind of like a creeper thing. <laughs> In all the worst ways possible. Okay, I think we now that we have rounded out the rest of the season, it's time to talk about the um God, I don't even know what to do to start with this one, so well, I, I, I'll start with this. No... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, Kamasa Kodasa. Kamikatsu, working for God in a godless world. Yeah. So, again, before we get into this one, content warning. Um... All of them. Every trigger warning. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> motherfucking pretty, pretty fears. Much, and yes. watch me piss people off. If you are sensitive about anything do not watch this <laughs> oh oh dear god just i oh and, and especially uh if you do not like seeing serious intense topics treated with clear irreverence for humor and sometimes not for humor um give this one a pass for that <laughs> let me put it this, uh, very simply sexual assault is one of the most common things in the show you uh, you forget about it because of everything going on around it it's some of the worst you'll ever see in that in, in anime and i am counting ichi harem anime too and you forget about it oh my mother of god Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, somehow, despite all of its clear failings, this show manages to somehow, and perhaps in some cases because of them, be extremely brilliant. <laughs> you know what? If I, if I had to make a comparison to this to any other show I have ever watched it would be the english dub of ghost stories <laughs> but not because the dub was weird in this case just because that's the show <laughs> this show had no budget had no story it was its content was offensive on every level and the people the team making this knew that and they ran with it if some of these shows failed because they didn't reach for their premise, they didn't push the envelope hard enough, this show succeeded because it pushed it. Because it said, oh, you want me to take cultist grooming, sexual assault, and... God, I don't even want to... I, I, I'm worried that if I list anything more that this show had, I might be 
I, I, I think flags. even what we've already listed is already. <laughs> God, it's just not. Oh, it's let's start with the first thing it throws in your face, but you know, other than horrendous CGI, absolutely horrendous CGI of the war. I, I, I will like one out for sure, but we showed it's one in the last premise. <laughs> They ended on it. They knew what the meme was. And they ended on it. Um, this. Okay, so the the opening premise of this is a child raised or a, the main protagonist is raised in a cult. And it is eventually sacrificed by the cult by being drowned by his own father in a barrel by being thrown into a river while tied to inside the barrel. And it's it 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 it, it goes from there to the where the point where this character is actively redoing this everything he hated, everything he disliked, everything reason he wanted to be born into a world without a god he brings into it. This is... I want to point out, series... too, at one point he actually gets called out by one of the other characters as being a vile scumbag that's worse than the villains, and he just kind of goes, nah, I reject my reality and substitute my own. Uh, I, I still think you guys are worse. <laughs> because it's just... It's... It's... It's but, Tractor Head, the enemy. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to throw this. This is... It It fails on every level, but it does it so spectacular. You know what? Screw it. It's the top of this season. It is the <laughs> peak of this season. It is what we are here for. It I is think... weird. It is crazy. It is horrific on every fundamental level. I think it will and be si it. simultaneously reviled for its content and also uh, establish a strong Let's... cult following. There we go. Let's end on the meme. Let's <laughs> the put the must meme in. <laughs> Let's end on this. This is the sum of this show. And it is glorious. I want to point out, too, that uh, this is an actual screen grab from the show. Uh, the text, of course, wasn't that large in the original because it was just a subtitle. But this is actually a scene um, where all of a sudden the character was just a head that was superimposed onto some real footage that had gone through a filter. Uh, and the show this isn't the only example of this. The show does this a lot. It is bizarre and incredibly creative with the types of weird animation choices that it does. Um, right up until the final episode, where we have this strange juxtapos juxtaposition of the terrible CGI monsters that we see throughout the show, and a competently executed Sakuga-style camera swing with these horrible monstrosities of monsters in it. <laughs> It's um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get off that because I think I think that picture is going to disrail us both for a while there. Yeah. Um it's um. There's no explaining this show. Uh, if you are a person who can get past the fact that it contains practically every a uh, potentially seriously objectionable kind of content that exists. Um, give it a watch, because, wow, will it 
definitely be a unique experience for you. <laughs> this this will be a show I will for, will forever hold up on a hey, let's get drunk or let's do legal substance in my area <laughs> and show this to a bunch of people who have never seen it and just it is S tier because it will live in infamy. <laughs> If you are somebody who can love 4chan, who can love Reddit, who can go into the worst parts of the internet and just, oh my god, I love this shit post. This will be a franchise of legend for you, of propaganda, of... I can't think it's a franchise that must be experienced on every level. Discarded, re experienced, get in highly inebriated, re experienced, and then loved. <laughs> that being said, if you don't, if you have any of those warnings, and if you can't enjoy a absolute shit post of a series, then give this watch. one a wide berth. <laughs> Do not watch anybody who would do, do not talk to anyone who would want to bring this up. Yeah, don't e don't even associate with the kind of people who would watch it. <laughs> and I'm in that category, so. <laughs> so, that being said, overall, we, this is our final rankings. Agree, disagree, discuss. We might even leave the comment sections open for the other two too. <laughs> I, I absolutely will. Uh, the comment section will be open on my YouTube. Uh, feel free to debate and flame. I'm sure if anyone does comment, they probably will. <laughs> yep. But, I don't know, Yuki, how would you rate this season of anime overall? Was this a good season? Was this a bad season? Would you I like to give like a letter or a number to it? that struggled significantly with Bloat. Um, I, I feel like there's just not enough quality animation studios and animators to keep up with the demand uh, that is being put upon the industry right now as all of these Western streaming services and stuff try to pump money into the uh, industry. And we're experiencing a lot of growing pains. We're seeing, uh, you know, studios split and bring in a lot of, like, amateur animators and things like that that are bringing the overall qu production qualities down. But if we're lucky, that will prove to be an investment in the future. And as more people obtain these industry skills, uh, we may start to see the overall quality start to increase again. Yeah. All right. I think you can definitely see that with this anime list. A lot of the mid-tier are well-done, okay series that are just pumped out by the larger studios, while the upper tiers are either shonen that are on their top of the game or are newer, smaller people who are taking risks or chances with stuff that we haven't seen in a while or haven't seen before in a lot of this. Yeah, again, Kamikatsu did stuff that my expectation as a viewer is it would never make it onto a screen as a professional production. <laughs> yeah. And it will be interesting to see those better stories, those better series, or even some of the anime industry itself. Like with the uh, Sacrificial Princess and King of Beasts, this is a series I read back. Uh, I, mm. Oh, over a decade ago, I would say for the manga on that. And when I saw that being released, it it instantly shocked me. The fact that this a series that that was this old, that was this mildly niche, was getting a full animation. Which we also have seen with other shows, especially on goddamn Netflix. 
Dear God, I'm out. Oh, I don't even want to get started on Netflix. They're... They're doing their own thing, and it's usually not good. We've had some hits over there. We've also had some, um... Yeah, I think well, the problem never... is just that for every Violet Evergarden, there's ten, like, Grappler Baki remakes. <laughs> Technically, that's a continuation of the original anime, which is even weirder. Yeah, however you want to, whatever you want to call it, it's, uh, it wasn't good. <laughs> and I was a yeah. fan of the original Grappler Baki. Hey, if it's not good, why does it have four seasons? Uh, well, uh, that's a whole other topic in terms of Netflix's decision-making process, uh, which is, in my book, leaving a lot to be desired, especially on the anime front. Bastard got an animation continuation. Guy? It's getting a season two. Uh, to be fair, I haven't tried to watch that one, but my expectations are dismal. It's an 80s shonen. Well, yes, but I, I mean, the I haven't tried to watch the Netflix remake or whatever it is that they made of it. It's a faithful adaptation. Me? Hey. The good and the bad that entails. <laughs> 80 Shonen is a different beast than modern Shonen. Oh, for sure. But... With all of this, I think we can wrap this up for the night. I think and so. It's been quite a stream. Ups, downs, all, all arounds, and um, probably a lot of controversy. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Is there anyone you would like to raid, Yuki? Uh, let me take a look at who I've got available. If there's anybody on my list. I know I do have a couple people up currently, but uh, they're hey, not my general go <laughs> No. Um, uh, I see Sinja uh, is playing Phasmophobia. That's probably who I would raid. All right. Uh, send me the name, and I'll and I will raid over there with you, with all of the people we have. Will do. Any typos or anything? There you go. Uh, and which platform did you drop it in? Oh, uh, that Discord. I, I DM'd it to you. No, oh, oh, yeah, top. I was expecting chat. Oh, sorry, my bad. I had sound. All right. We, um, we 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 both probably have a bajillion windows open at the current time. So this is true. We I, I it is a mess on my desktop here. Um, yep. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lengthy discussion of the season's anime. Um, every day Yuki. is a, a waking nightmare. Welcome uh, <laughs> to Yuki Kazi Gaming Snappy. Yep. But you all have a good time. We should be back in. Probably not too long for the start of summer anime 2023. All have a good day and all have a good night. Goodbye. Bye bye, Matini.